What would it feel like if my boyfriend was extremely energetic? Shen Ruajing slowly woke up and felt a headache when she recalled the intense battle last night. Who would have thought that the impossibly beautiful man last night would have such shocking stamina? It was like he didn't know fatigue and actually did her, several times. Was he too excited because he succeeded in his marriage proposal last night? At this moment, Shen Ruajing sat up from the bed in the hotel room and discovered that Chu Tsichen was not inside the room. Shen Ruajing then took her phone out and called him immediately. She felt there was a need to discuss the topic moderation with him, but an electronic voice suddenly echoed from within the phone, and it caused her heart to sink. Hello, the number you just dialed is not in use. Chu Tsichen had gone missing. After that, Shen Ruajing went to all the places he might appear in, but she didn't see anyone. Worried that he might have encountered some mishap, she ultimately decided to report this to the police. But in the end, the investigation results showed. This person basically didn't exist. Regardless of the working address he had once told her, his family address, the ID he had used to book the hotel room last night, or even the footage from the surveillance camera, there were no traces of him. He vanished into thin air as if he had never existed before. A ridiculous thought appeared in her mind, could it be that the courtship she had experienced for half a year was nothing but a dream? Unfortunately, she soon discovered that she was pregnant. Hence, an uproar shook the entire Shen family, and matriarch Shen was greatly enraged, deciding to chase her and her parents out of the Shen family, even striking off their names from the family register. In the short span of a month, she, the eldest miss of the powerful Shen family, became an abandoned woman that everyone knew about. It was said that she then fell into depravity after giving birth to a child. Five years later, in the luxury intercontinental hotel, Screech. Shen Ruajing rode an old motorbike and sped over before coming to an abrupt stop at the hotel's entrance. Her lanky legs were on the ground to balance the motorbike. Chu Tianai, who was five years old, jumped down from the back seat with great familiarity. He then removed his little helmet and smoothed over his naturally curly hair. His bright eyes were filled with excitement as he asked, Mommy, are you sure that daddy is here? I'm certain. Shen Ruajing also removed her helmet. She was dressed in loose clothes, and her long hair was casually tied up. Her clear and beautiful features were shrouded in a lazy and detached temperament. She seemed very out of place when compared to the other people in the lobby who were wearing luxurious clothing. Today was the birthday of Matriarch Chu from the richest aristocratic clan. She was currently holding a birthday celebration banquet within, and the guests who came were all either rich or had very high statuses. Ever since Shen Ruajing was chased out of the Shen family, she never participated in such a banquet anymore. However, just an hour ago, she suddenly received an anonymous email with the latest piece of financial news within. The title was, Chu Tsichen, the successor of the number one corporation, has returned to the country to celebrate his mother's birthday. The photo was snapped at the airport. The man in the photo was clad in a black western suit, and his tall and sturdy figure caused the entire airport to dim in comparison. The contours of his face were clear and his features were exquisite. His deep gaze seemed as though it was capable of piercing through the monitor. This was none other than her boyfriend five years ago who had told her that his background was an ordinary one. Shen Ruajing then parked her vehicle and brought Chu Tianai into the lobby. After that, a voice filled with surprise suddenly drifted over. Hey look, isn't that the eldest miss that got expelled from the Shen family? Lin Wanru and a few other ladies stood not far away. So when Lin Wanru heard this sentence, she immediately turned around. Her eyes narrowed when she saw Shen Ruajing and her smile froze on her face. Her voice was filled with astonishment. Shen Ruajing, what are you doing here? Shen Ruajing looked over and calmly replied, why can't I be here? As the sound of her voice rang out, someone immediately berated her. Shen Ruajing, watch how you are talking to Miss Lin. Do you think you are still that eldest miss from Shen family that can stand on equal grounds with Miss Lin? Although you were once known as a part of the Sea City Twin Beauties, together with Miss Lin, the current you don't even have the qualifications to lift Miss Lin's shoes. Yup. Miss Lin was chosen by Matriarch Chu and she is going to be engaged with young Master Chen. Shen Ruajing started. Chu Tsi Chen? Is the name of young Master Chen something you can mention? Who do you think you are? Back then, you were unrestrained and had S asterisk X with quite a few strangers. You probably have no idea who the father of your son is. Also, look at what you are wearing. Are you in such bad straits that you can't even afford to purchase a proper dress? How shameless. Shen Ruadong, your Shen family had better teach your members more competently. Shen Ruadong was Shen Ruajing's younger female cousin, 
and she was also among this group of young rich ladies. Feeling embarrassed and angry, she then rushed toward Shinruajing and scolded her. Shinruajing, do you know your own limits? You are nothing but a broken flower that was expelled from the family, yet you actually dared to come here? Scram quickly and stop embarrassing yourself here. Don't drag me down and shame me along with you. A hint of contempt flashed in Shinruajing's eyes. In the matter those years ago, she was clearly the victim, but she had no idea who twisted the story and caused her reputation to plummet. She then became known as a wanton woman that everyone wanted to avoid. It was one thing for outsiders to treat her like this, but even her family who knew the truth also treated her the same way. She didn't want to be calculative with those who had no connection with this, but Chu Tianai didn't want his mother to suffer anymore. His tiny figure stood behind her as his clear and juvenile voice rang out crisply. Mommy, I was wondering why there's the stench of the sea. So it turns out that the brains of everyone here are filled with water. Hearing this, Shin Ruadong was infuriated. Little B asterisk starred, who are you scolding? Come out right now. Seeing that chaos was about to unfold, Lin Wanru forcibly suppressed the consternation in her heart and spoke, enough. As the future daughter-in-law that Matriarch Chu had selected, she was in charge of the reception here today. Any problems here would be counted as part of her responsibility as well. She then looked at Shen Ruajing. Shen Ruajing's skin was like rouge. Her delicate lips were ruby red, and there was a tiny red mole on the bridge of her nose that increased her charm factor. As her peach blossom eyes sparkled slightly, she exuded a feeling of transcendence in the world. She must not allow Shen Ruajing to appear at the Chu family's banquet. Lin Wanru clenched her fingers and feigned goodwill as she spoke, Miss Shen, have you brought the gift money? If you want to enter, it's impossible with just an invitation. You have to bring some gift money as well. Shen Ruajing started slightly. What gift money? Maybe it has been too long since you last attended a banquet and you are unclear of the Chu family's rules. Lin Wanru continued speaking, Matriarch Chu's nature is that of a money lover, so she only accepts money and not presents for her birthday celebration. Hence, there is an unwritten rule in her banquet. Those who gift one million can sit at this table. Those who gift ten million can sit at that table. Miss Shen, can I ask how much money you are planning on gifting? Shen Ruadong angrily stomped her feet when she heard this. She found this very embarrassing. How would she have money? Their family is so poor to the extent that they don't even have the money to buy milk powder. Shen Ruajing, you didn't come here to steal a free meal or something, right? The others also began to mock her. Not any Tom, Dick, or Harry can attend the Chu family's banquet. She even brought a little bee asterisk start along. How ridiculous, wait, could she have come here to look for her child's father? Miss Lin, you are too soft-hearted. You should directly get the guards to toss them out. Lin Wanru revealed an apologetic smile. Miss Shen, you should quickly go if you didn't bring any money. It wouldn't be too good if you got chased out. Just when everyone was waiting to see a joke. All of a sudden, Shen Ruajing's lips curled into a smile before she pushed Chu Tianai, who was glancing with interest at everything here, to the face of the butler. Could I trouble you to ask Matriarch Chu this question? Which table should someone who gave the matriarch her eldest grandson get? The people here immediately sank into a bizarre silence. Everyone then stared at Chu Tianai in astonishment. The features of this little boy were exquisite, and his large beautiful eyes were simply the same as the other young masters of the Chu family. Could it be that this kid really had the bloodline of the Chu family? Lin Wanru didn't see this kid earlier. At this moment, her eyes were trained on Chu Tianya's face, and her fists clenched tightly at the next moment. The others here had never met Chu Tsichen before so they had no idea that the features of this child were actually 50% to 60% similar to him. Clearly, Shen Ruadong was also dumbstruck. Shen Ruajing, what do you mean? Could it be that this little bee asterisk ass, this child's father is young master Mo or young master Yuan? Chu Chimo was a horny guy. On the other hand, Chu Tsi Yuan was an illegitimate child of the Chu family, so his status wasn't high. It might really be possible that Shen Ruajing had a relationship with either one of these two. The surrounding people immediately revealed envious expressions. Although she couldn't be compared to Miss Lin, if there was a chance that she could build a connection with the Chu family, who would dare to bully her in the future? Before Shen Ruajing spoke, Lin Wanru aggressively interrupted her. Shen Ruajing, this isn't the place to chat. This matter concerns the reputation of the Chu family, so it's better for you to talk to Matriarch Chu directly. Please come with me. Under the gazes of everyone, Shen Ruajing was invited to the VIP resting room by Lin Wanru. 
As the only six-star hotel in Sea City, one had to pass through a huge garden from the lobby to the VIP resting room. Although Shinruajing had often attended banquets in the past, she had never seen someone capable of reserving the entire hotel as the celebration venue. The Chu family was indeed the richest family in Sea City. Chu Tianai pranced around and followed her. At this moment, his eyes were bright as he surveyed the surroundings. Mommy, Daddy's family seems to be very rich. He had checked earlier and discovered that this hotel was a property that belonged to the Chu family. There were valuable plants and trees that were worth millions here. There were also rockery and an artificial lake that were worth tens of millions here. The entire hotel emanated the smell of money. He really liked this place. Seeing that her child's expression was akin to a money grubber, Shinruajing twitched her lips. When she recalled that Matriarch Chu was also a money grubber, she could only sigh helplessly, truly, some traits are passed down in a family. Since there were no outsiders now, Lin Wanru immediately retracted her expression of false civility and mocked, you must have been living very badly during these few years. You have even nurtured your son into a country bumpkin. Hearing this, Chu Tianai rolled his eyes and pursed his lips. Things are really tough for my mommy these few years as the prices of goods are going up. It would be much easier if all women were like you. Lin Wanru didn't understand. Like me? Chu Tianai stuck his tongue out. A slut. Lin Wanru didn't lose her temper, but her gaze was like a venomous snake when she glared at Chu Tianai. She suddenly spoke sinisterly, toss this little bastard into the lake for me. The artificial lake was connected to the rivers outside, so the water flow was very rapid. If a child who fell and didn't manage to get out of the water in time, they would be washed away and might end up dying without a complete body. If the kid was gone, how else would Shinruajing verify that he had the Chu family's blood? The two bodyguards behind Lin Wanru were her trusted aides. Hence, one of them stopped Shinruajing, while the other went to capture Chu Tianai. Shinruajing angrily spoke, his father is Chu Tsichen, who dares to touch him? Upon hearing this, Lin Wanru didn't panic. She coldly laughed. So what? Let me tell you this. Young Master Chen and I are both in a happy relationship. We will not permit this child to break us up. Happy relationship. If they really succeeded in the engagement, what did her relationship five years ago with Chu Tsichen count as? Shen Ruajing calmly spoke, I want to meet Chu Tsichen. She disliked misunderstandings. For some matters, it was better to make things clear face to face. Lin Wanru fiddled with her fingers. How can someone so lowly like you meet young Master Chen just because you want to? And what are the two of you in a days for? Quickly drown this little bee asterisk starred for me. Just when the guard almost caught Chu T and I, the little fellow agilely squeezed his way out from under his arm. Meanwhile, Shen Ruajing didn't run to him but directly grabbed Lin Wanru's neck instead. She then forcefully dragged her onto the railings by the lake. As long as she released her hand, Lin Wanru would fall in. How would the two guards still dare to capture Chu Ti and I like this? They hurriedly rushed over. Shen Ruajing calmly spoke, don't come over. Lin Wanru was badly frightened. Shen Ruajing, what are you doing? Get Chu Tsichen to meet me. Lin Wanru felt so much hatred that she gritted her teeth. Young Master Chen's flight got delayed, so he basically won't come here tonight and will head straight back to their residence. You should just give up. She would definitely not permit the two of them to meet. At this moment, the butler of the Chu family heard the commotion and came over with a few other guards. A hint of light gleamed in Lin Wanru's eyes. All of a sudden, Lin Wanru exerted force and pushed Shen Ruajing away so she fell into the lake herself. Shen Ruajing pushed me into the lake. Quickly come and save me. After that, a few guards jumped into the water and Lin Wanru was soon saved. Her eyes were red. Butler, just now she said that her son belongs to young master M.O., but she then changed her words and said her son belongs to young master Yuan, she even said that her son belongs to young master Chen. I merely exposed her lies, but she grew angry from embarrassment and directly pushed me into the lake. The butler's face turned black from rage. He directly commanded the guards here. Capture them. They truly must be tired of living since they dared to cause trouble for the Chu family. Lin Wanru heaved a sigh of relief. After capturing Shen Ruajing, wouldn't she be the one to decide how Shen Ruajing would be dealt with? She then whispered to her two trusted subordinates, break the limbs of the adult and toss her out. Also, drown this little bee asterisk starred, but make it look like he slips in carelessly. Although Lin Wanru's volume wasn't loud, the shape of her mouth was clearly seen by Shen Ruajing. Hence, Shen Ruajing frowned. She was now being surrounded by over ten guards. 
As for Chu Tianai, he winked at her. His daddy didn't want to come? Luckily, he was prepared and had sent his younger sister to the airport to fetch his daddy. At the airport, Chu Tsichen just got off the plane and was walking toward the airport's exit. His figure was tall and sturdy, and there seemed to be a perpetual chill that shrouded him. As he exuded a sense of tyranny and there were guards in front and behind him, ordinary people basically wouldn't be able to get close to him. Just when he arrived at the VIP pickup gate, he saw Lu Chen wearing a shirt with flower prints and holding the leash tied to a Samoyed standing there. Beside him, there was a beautiful little girl hugging a fearsome-looking cloth puppet. She was staring at the dog with rapt attention. Chu Xiaomeng was pulling the corners of her clothes. She didn't like to interact with humans as she had mild symptoms of social phobia. Hence, she didn't really like to talk to strangers. B, but this dog was so adorable ee. -e. She then summoned her courage and walked toward Lu Qing. Uncle, can I pet the little doggy? Her cutesy voice really made it impossible for Lu Qing to reject her. Lu Qing teased her. I will let you pet it if you call big bro. Am I so old? I haven't even gotten married yet, okay? Chu Xiaoming widened her beautiful eyes. She didn't understand why this man made this request, but she still decided to compromise. Uncle, can I pat big bro? Lu Chen was dumbfounded. Cold air suddenly gushed over and Lu Cheng turned his head in surprise. Bro Chen, you finally arrived. Let me tell you how this little girl bullied me. He was really depressed that he was fooled by this little girl. Chu Chen then frowned in disdain before turning to look at the little girl. However, he saw that the little girl was now staring directly at him. A few seconds later, Joy appeared on her face as her bright and crisp voice rang out, Daddy, quickly go and save mommy and elder brother. Chu Xiaoming's cutesy voice caused everyone to be stunned. Lu Cheng and the guards all turned to look at Chu Tsichen in shock. When did their boss have a daughter? Chu Tsichen then stared at the little girl in front of him. She was indeed beautiful and her long black hair reached her shoulders. Moreover, her pair of peach blossom eyes were extremely clear, and her little cheeks were filled with baby fats. Although she was very young, she already revealed the hints of an empire toppling beauty. But, calling him daddy? Chu Tsichen furrowed his brows. I'm not your. Before he could finish speaking, the little girl already ran over and held his finger. Daddy, stop talking nonsense. Earlier, Big Bro just sent news to me saying that they have been surrounded by people. If we go too late, they might have to start beating people up. The people in the surroundings who were currently listening with excitement couldn't help but feel puzzled. The kid must have said wrongly, right? She meant being beaten up instead of beating people up, right? At this moment, Chu Tsichen's gaze landed on the little hand wrapped around his finger. His eyes then gleamed and his tone involuntarily softened. Who is your mother? Shen Ruajing. The back garden of the luxury intercontinental hotel was now filled with chaos. Over ten guards were lying on the ground with swollen faces. Their bodies were in so much pain that they couldn't get up. Lin Wanru was tossed into the water again. She tried to tread water with all her effort and was fortunate enough not to be washed away by the currents. Due to being angry from embarrassment, she started screaming, Shinroa Jing, you actually dare to bully me? Matriarch Chu will never spare you. Also, young Master Chen, will never spare you. You are finished, your entire family is finished. Shinroa Jing calmly patted the dust off of her hands and nodded slightly to the butler. Her voice was cold. I apologize, the commotion must have disturbed Matriarch Chu's birthday celebration. The butler was the only one who wasn't beaten up. He was currently staring at her with dread and astonishment. Wasn't she famous for being a vase asterisk? Why was she so capable in a fight? At this moment, Shen Ruajing held her son's hand and walked outside. Since Chu Tsichen wouldn't be coming, it was pointless to remain here. Chu Tianai frowned and asked with worry in his tone, Mommy, since you beat that woman surnamed Lin up, would daddy's family really not spare us? No problem. She knew that her son was thinking too much and was worried for their family despite being so young. Hence, Shen Ruajing consoled him, after we meet your father, all the misunderstandings will be unraveled. Even if Chu Tsichen had a change of heart, the fact that Chu Tianai was his son wouldn't change. Given her understanding of Chu Tsichen, he wouldn't make things difficult for them. Half an hour later, Shen Ruajing drove home. She then turned into a corner, arriving at a three-story terrace. Just when she entered, she was completely shocked by the scene before her eyes. On the sofa in the living lounge, a handsome man was lying there. His peach-blossom eyes were wide open, but his gaze wasn't focused. 
Moreover, his face was as pale as paper, and many parts of his white shirt were dyed red by blood, constituting a shocking sight. Anyone who saw such a scene when they returned home would surely scream in horror. However, Shinruajing's lips merely twitched a little. Even Chu Tianai felt indifferent as he walked over. He then squatted by the corpse and lifted its chin, proceeding to look into its eyes that were filled with unresolved grievance. Thirty seconds later, the corpse blinked its tired eyes. Jingjing, how's your father's act as a corpse? Isn't it really genuine? Look, even a little child like Little Yi was so frightened that he couldn't speak. This person was none other than Shen Ruajing's father, Jing Zhen. He was an old actor of low popularity. Shen Ruajing followed her mother's surname because Jing Zhen had married into her mother's family. The term gigolo could also be referred to him. His face was even better looking compared to some top celebrities, his features exquisite and his peach blossom eyes containing a myriad of emotions. Moreover, his skin also glowed with luster, and he had a tall figure. Age didn't seem to leave any traces on him. He was outrageously handsome. Sadly, he just wasn't popular. Fortunately, he had acted for over twenty years and had some savings. This house was his private property and wasn't taken back when they were expelled from the Shen family. At this moment, Jing Zhen took the script and boasted complacently, don't look down on me just because I act as a supporting character. The entire filming crew actually revolves around me. I'm the core of this show. I'm really too important. Shen Rua Jing, okay tell me, how many scenes did you appear in for the entire show? Jing Zhen, one. Shen Rua Jing, so he was dead the moment he appeared in the scene? Jing Zhen was very unhappy. What do you mean by such an expression? Although I only have a single scene, this is a detective drama, so the other actors are playing characters that investigate my death. Jing Zhen's phone suddenly rang. As he picked up the call, Shen Ruajing brought her son back to their room. But before she could enter, she heard her father shouting loudly. What? You guys don't want me to act anymore? Director, why did you do this? My detailed analysis of this character is truly profound and I even wrote a backstory for him. I guarantee that if I act as the corpse, I can make the corpse look vivid and lifelike. The sound of the director's angry voice also rang out. You even wrote a backstory for a minor character like this? Are you f asterisk king crazy? Jing Zhen spoke sullenly, you don't even want me to act despite the role being a corpse? The director sighed. Forget it, I will tell you the truth. I don't know how your daughter offended the Chu family, but none of the filming crews will hire you now. Just let me warn you out of goodwill, if you want to live quickly flee. The Chu family isn't an easily bullied one. Your acting career has reached its peak and ended. Jing Zhen? He hurriedly opened his WeChat and discovered that his manager already told him that all his upcoming schedules had been cancelled. Jing Zhen frowned. A moment later, he slowly lifted his head and looked at Shen Ruajing. His aura then grew so large that it seemed he could swallow mountains and rivers. Jing Jing, don't be afraid. Father will stand up for you no matter what happens. Chu Tianai started slightly. At this moment, the image of his grandfather in his mind suddenly became extremely tall. But at the next instant, his grandfather reverted back to his original form. He anxiously paced around and spoke in a terrified tone, Do you think we should sell our house? It would be easier if we have to flee. Chu Tianai. He knew it, all maternal grandfathers were unreliable. Shen Ruajing then touched her chin. Although Jing Zhen liked fooling around, he was truly very fond of acting. He might not be popular and highly regarded by the crew, but he enjoyed his job and tirelessly delved deep into every character, analyzing them. Just when she wanted to explain, her phone suddenly rang. After that, a frivolous male voice could be heard the moment she picked up the call. Boss, how did you offend the Chu family? Why did the Chu family suddenly release news that they want to make your family vanish from Sea City? Shen Ruajing directly hung up. When her phone rang again, she impatiently picked it up. I don't know if the Chu family can make me vanish or not, but do you believe that I can make sure you vanish from Sea City? After a while, she realized that something was wrong, hence, she glanced at the phone number. It was an unfamiliar number. After that, a low-sounding voice that she hadn't heard for a long time rang out. I am Chu Tsichen. His voice was low but filled with power. It was familiar yet there was also a tinge of unfamiliarity within, and this caused her heart to clench. For a time, she actually had no idea what to say. So many words flashed in her mind, but eventually all the words condensed into a single sentence. Where are you? Airport. Okay, I'm heading over to look for you now. The journey was supposed to be an hour one, 
but Shinruajing arrived in merely 40 minutes. She swiftly entered the VIP resting room in the airport and saw the man who was as lofty as an emperor with a single glance. Currently, he no longer had the immaturity of youth and gave off a mature and steady presence. She was sure that this was none other than the person she had been searching for five years. Shinruajing slowed her steps. After that, a smile appeared on her face. She didn't expect that she would have such feelings of homesickness. She then quickened her pace once more. But just when she was two meters away from Chutsichin, two bodyguards stepped out and blocked her. She didn't mind and asked the most crucial question first, you want to be engaged to Lin Wanru? If this matter was real, there was no longer a need to get to the bottom of things. She, Shen Ruajing, was more than capable enough to let go if need be. She had tracked him so hard for so many years simply because she wanted a result. Chutsichin sat on the sofa. His beautiful features were so perfect that they would shock anyone. Moreover, he was clad in a custom-made western suit, and every detail was strictly tailored. This further accentuated the sense of nobility he exuded. When Lin Wanru was mentioned, he frowned slightly and replied, No. Upon hearing this, a look of satisfaction appeared in Shen Ruajing's eyes. She then continued to ask, Where have you been all these years? Chutsichin's cold phoenix eyes merely swept over her. After that, he pushed the petite and adorable Chu Xiaoming forward and spoke with no emotions, Miss Chen, please take your daughter with you. Miss Chen. This cold and estranged way of addressing caused Shen Ruajing to sense that something was wrong. Chu Xiaoming who was brought to the front skeptically asked, Mommy, why does daddy say that he doesn't know you? Shen Ruajing started. You don't know me? Chu Xichen's eyes flashed with a hint of impatience. Should I know you? He had run into this little girl the moment he exited the airport. She then hugged his thigh and called him daddy, refusing to let go no matter what. Hence, he had no solution but to call the mother of this child. In the end, he didn't expect that this woman would be even stranger. She immediately spoke to him with such familiarity when they just met. As he pondered, he noticed Shin Ruajing suddenly sidestepping agilely, avoiding the guards. After that, she charged at him. Mr. Chu, be careful. The bodyguards cried out in shock, but the woman had charged past them. At this moment, Chutsichin's gaze turned penetrating as his wrists were being pressed down. Shen Ruajing then sat beside him and was, feeling his pulse? A gentle finger touched his lips. The woman's exquisite face appeared before his eyes, and her peach blossom eyes also contained immense charm. Sure. This pair of eyes seemed somewhat familiar, Chutsichin actually didn't say anything due to being surprised. The surrounding bodyguards were stunned as well. So, should they stop the woman or not? Or should they pretend not to see? Half a minute later, the finger on his lips shifted to his forehead and touched there. The woman hesitated before speaking, you are not running a fever and show no symptoms of amnesia from head injuries. Shen Ruajing then shot a glance at him. Are you pretending now? Upon hearing this, Chu Xichen's expression changed. He abruptly stood up and took a step back to lengthen the distance between them. Miss Shen, please respect yourself. Leaning against a sofa, Shen Ruajing cocked her head and her beautiful eyelids fluttered. I've given birth to your children, yet you are saying such a thing to me? The guards and Lu Qing were both stunned. Lu Qing who had always been in Sea City naturally knew who the eldest miss of the Shen family was, so he exclaimed, Shen Ruajing, are you saying that Bro Chen is the boyfriend of yours that disappeared? Shen Ruajing nodded. That's right. Lu Qing found this very strange. However, Bro Chen only returned to the country once in the past five years and only stayed for a week. I thought you and your boyfriend dated for half a year? Or are you and Bro Chen cyber dating? Shen Ruajing slowly sat back up. He has always been in Sea City. We would meet for a date every weekend. Lu Qing, your lies are not professional enough. Didn't I tell you that he has been overseas? Can you at least weave something better? Shen Ruajing frowned. He has always been overseas. However, she could clearly remember the days they spent dating. Could it be that she had recognized the wrong person? Shen Ruajing was sure she wouldn't recognize him wrongly, but just in case, she stood up and spoke to Chu Xichen, let me do a DNA test first before I come back to look for you. She turned and left after that. Earlier when she was feeling his pulse, she took the chance to pluck a strand of his hair. Taking a bag from her pocket, she placed the sample inside. She then returned home to look for her son so she could bring him to the DNA verification institution. Chu Tianai, who had been waiting for news at home, looked behind her before glancing left and right. Mommy, where is my sister? Shen Ruajing? Her daughter who had social phobia rarely ventured out. 
so, it seemed that she had forgotten and left her daughter behind. In the VIP resting room of the airport, the guards lowered their heads. Failing to block Miss Shin is our mistake. Chutsichin's expression was heavy. There will be no exceptions next time. Yes, Lu Qing carefully asked, Bro Chen, what should we do with this kid? Chutsichin lowered his head and looked at Chu Xiaoming who was tugging his shirt. On the other hand, she lifted her head and stared at him with clear eyes that contained trust and adoration. Seeing her like this, he could only endure his rage and ask, Where is your house? Chu Xiaoming shook her head. Daddy, I have no idea. Don't call me daddy. Okay, daddy. A green vein throbbed on Chu Xichen's forehead. Forget it, let's bring her to my home first. The group of them then got into the prepared vehicles. On the way, Chu Xiaoming who suffered from social phobia was obediently sitting on the safety seat and did her best to reduce her sense of existence. However, her expressions were very fascinating to look at. It would be one of excitement before changing to one of hesitation. Wow, she felt so happy. She was going to go to her daddy's home. However, her daddy's family should be very huge, right? That would be really scary. Chutsichin was observing her micro-expressions and felt that she was pretty adorable. They soon arrived at the Chu Manor. However, Chu Xiaoming had fallen asleep in her seat, and her little head was tilted to the side. Seeing this, Chutsichin hesitated for a while before deciding to carry her down as he got off the vehicle. Matriarch Chu was close to 50 years old yet had maintained her appearance carefully. At this moment, she took a step forward. Xichen, you finally returned. When she saw that he was carrying a child, she couldn't help but start. This is? Matriarch Chu subconsciously stretched out her hand, wanting to take over Chu Xiaoming. However, as the shifting commenced, the little fellow woke up from her sleep. She rubbed her large eyes and saw, many people. Chu Xiaoming immediately squeezed her head into Matriarch Chu's embrace. Matriarch Chu. The little child was indeed very adorable, and she exuded the smell of milk, causing Matriarch Chu to soften her tone as she asked, Little lass, where are you from? Chu Xiaoming, elder sister, I'm from my daddy's home. Her brother taught her that the first thing to do in society was to address any beautiful woman as elder sister. Matriarch Chu was indeed very pleased when she heard that. She then spoke to Chutsichin, is this another debt due to your wild romances outside? There was a reason why she used the term another. Five years ago, Chutsichin had returned to the country for a week. At that time, he was plotted against and had s asterisk Zul encounters with a woman. Ten months later, Lin Wanru brought her child to the Chu family. After checking the DNA, the child did belong to Chutsichin. Matriarch Chu couldn't possibly ignore a child with the Chu bloodline and let it fend for itself outside. Hence, she kept the child and gave him the name Chu Yu. When she thought of this, Matriarch Chu's vision landed on Chu Xiaoming once more. Girly, who is your mother? Chu Xiaoming replied, Shen Ruajing. Matriarch Chu frowned. Shen Ruajing again? She thought of the scene today when Shen Ruajing had brought her son over and created a chaos at the banquet. But after she looked at the adorable Chu Xiaoming, Matriarch Chu suddenly thought that things would actually be pretty good if she was truly her granddaughter. Matriarch Chu suddenly said, do a DNA verification. No need. Chu Xichen coldly said, I was only plotted against once. Matriarch Chu felt extremely regretful in her heart. However, she understood Chu Xichen's objection. Back then, there was definitely a reason why he was plotted against. In addition, she also found out by chance that her son had someone he loved. It was just that he and his lover were separated due to some unknown reasons. This was also the reason why he kept delaying giving Lin Wanru a proper status. However, a child would surely need their mother. Matriarch Chu retracted her thoughts and carried Chu Xiaoming upstairs. Little girl, there's an elder brother up there, but he has fallen asleep. When he wakes up tomorrow, I will get him to play with you. After coaxing Chu Xiaoming to sleep, Matriarch Chu then went out of the bedroom. She instructed the butler, although Shen Ruajing created chaos for us, the child is innocent. Take good care of her. Yes. The butler nodded. She then hesitated for a while before speaking again, Miss Lin used our Chu family's name to circulate news outside. The news said that you are very angry and don't wish to see the Shen family in Sea City anymore. Matriarch Chu immediately frowned. Someone who had been in a high position for a long time would naturally appear imposing without being angry. No wonder Tsichen doesn't like her. Her head is filled with too many schemes. The butler asked, should we clear the air? Matriarch Chu sighed. If we did so, it would be smacking Lin Wanru's face. 
and it would be equivalent to smacking our own face. Chu Yu was the grandson she personally brought up. It was also for the sake of the kid that Matriarch Chu wanted Lin Wanru and Chu Zichen to get together. Matriarch Chu waved her hand. Forget it. Shen Ruajing had messed up Matriarch Chu's birthday celebration for no rhyme or reason. If there wasn't a little punishment, many people might wonder why. During the next day, after Chu Xiaoming woke up, Matriarch Chu brought her down for breakfast. After she went downstairs, she found another child that was the same age as her sitting on the sofa. Her eyes immediately widened. Chu Yu glanced at her from his higher position on the sofa. As the most prestigious little young master of Sea City, he had never faked his expressions when interacting with others. He glanced at Chu Xiaoming. Mn, she was really quite adorable. Chu Yu then sat straight and his chin was slightly lifted. His grandmother told him earlier that a little sister had just arrived at their home. Although her mother's reputation wasn't good, there was no need to implicate a kid in the matters of the adult world. So, later when he saw Chu Xiaoming, should he greet her? It wouldn't be too good if he ignored her. However, he heard the servant saying that her mother had offended his grandmother, so if he greeted her. The little girl sat there with a straight face, but her heart was pounding madly. Just when Chu Yu was conflicted, he saw Chu Xiaoming looking straight ahead, not even bothering to glance at him. Chu Yu. She's so lofty and cool. Although her background wasn't good, she was charming and beautiful. Chu Yu gave her a hundred points in his heart. He completely had no idea that when Chu Xiaoming lowered her head, she was madly chanting this in her heart. He can't see me, he can't see me. The world of someone with social phobia was just so simple. Lin family. Lin Wanru was down with the flu and was lying on the bed and sneezing. When she recalled the humiliation last night, she ruthlessly spoke, back them if I stole all her triplets, there wouldn't have been trouble today. Five years ago, Lin Wanru met Chu Zichen and Shen Ruajing by chance at a hotel. After that, Chu Zichen vanished and Shen Ruajing's missing person police report spread around wildly. Only then did Lin Wanru realize that Shen Ruajing basically had no idea about the guy's identity, and Shen Ruajing even got pregnant. Hence, Lin Wanru told her mother to keep an eye on Shen Ruajing. Through bribing a doctor, they made the doctor change her pregnancy report from having triplets to twins. During the birth process, Shen Ruajing was under general anesthesia as a C-section was done. Hence, she was completely unaware. However, Lin Wanru didn't expect that there would be a day when this could be exposed. Madam Lin frowned. We almost got discovered by her father just by stealing one. In addition, why would we need triplets? In the future, you have to give birth to your own baby with young Master Chen. Do you want his fortune to be shared amongst the three kids? Lin Wanru bit her lips and was so anxious that she almost cried. What should I do now? Madam Lin consoled her. Don't worry. Right now, Shen Ruajing basically won't be able to come in contact with young Master Chen. In addition, their family will vanish from Sea City in just a few days. I'm going to the Shen family to suppress them now. Just wait for my good news. Outside the three-story terrace, Shen Ruajing woke up on time. After practicing some Tai Chi, she sat on the sofa and waited for the DNA Verification Institution to send her the report. Creak. The door was pushed open, and her mother Shen Qianhui walked in wearily. After working overtime for so long, the faint layer of makeup on her beautiful melon face couldn't mask her fatigue. However, her eyes were shining with excitement. Jingjing, I want to share some good news with you. Before Shen Ruajing could reply, Shen Qianhui continued, I just helped the Shen family to secure a huge project. Your grandmother will surely restore my position as the general manager. Shen Ruajing drank a mouthful of wolfberry tea and coldly said, This is the thirteenth time you said that this year. They will only give you a little bonus at most. Shen Qianhui sighed. Jingjing, I know you have some prejudice against your grandmother. However, she was forced to expel us back then because she had no solutions left. Actually, she has never forgotten us. It has been so many years, but am I not still working in the company of the Shen family? In addition, they will also give us a set amount of living expenses every month on time. That's because you are capable. If you join another company, your salary will definitely not be so low. Hearing this, Shen Qianhui revealed a worried expression. Don't say that, after all, she's not my birth mother. It's already not bad that your grandmother can treat me like this. Shen Ruajing quietened down. Shen Qianhui was actually a child adopted by Matriarch Shen. Back then Matriarch Shen had only adopted her because of her beauty and wanted to use her in a marriage alliance. 
However, she didn't expect that Shen Qianhui was so capable in business, yet her two sons were useless in comparison. Shen Qianhui entered the company at 18 years old, and her effort enabled the business to keep growing. Matriarch Shen suddenly felt that it was better not to use her in a marriage alliance. Hence, she stopped the flow of suitors by saying that she was reluctant to marry her daughter off. Eventually, she decided to find an unpopular actor, Jing Zhen, to be her son-in-law. Five years ago, when Shen Ruajing's matter caused a huge uproar, Matriarch Shen used the pretext of this matter might bring a negative influence on Shen Qianhui's cousin to expel them from the Shen family. She then fired Shen Qianhui from her general manager position and moved her to sales instead. In truth, she only did this to seize away Shen Qianhui's authority in the company. This could allow Shen Qianhui to continue working hard for the business, but she would have no shares of the company. How good would it be if Matriarch Shen only needed to pay her a paltry sum for monthly living expenses? Sadly, Shen Qianhui, who craved motherly love basically wouldn't believe this. Shen Qianhui sounded more hopeful as she asked her daughter, Jingjing, do you think your grandmother will allow us to go home if I perform more outstandingly? Nope. Shen Ruajing ruthlessly broke her fantasy. At this moment, Shen Qianhui's phone suddenly rang. She casually glanced at the notification, but her expression immediately changed. She then obediently picked up the call. Mother, oh, you want me to come home? Okay, I'm heading over right now. After hanging up, Shen Qianhui grew excited. Jingjing, I've told you that your grandmother isn't that sort of person, but you don't believe me, do you see it now? Your grandmother is asking me to go home. I'm sure she's going to reinstate my general manager position. She then spoke, after I get back the general manager position, you have to apologize for the bad things you said about your grandmother behind her back. After speaking, she anxiously rushed out. Shen Ruajing originally planned to rush out with her, but her phone rang at this moment. It was from the DNA Verification Institution. The results were out. When Shen Ruajing picked up the call, a coy female voice could be heard. Darling, I personally verified this for you and delayed my sleep. You have to remember that you owe me a favor, alrighty? Amen. I really envy you, retiring at such a young age and living a relaxed life. Look at how busy I am, I'm really pitiful. Shen Ruajing interrupted her, so, what are the results? They are father and son. The report has been sent to your email. Thanks. Shen Ruajing hung the phone and frowned. Since she hadn't recognized the wrong person, why did Chu Tsichen not remember her? She then took out her phone and began searching for Chu Tsichen's news. In the end, there was completely no news about him, even in the financial sector. One wasn't able to find anything related to Chu Tsichen on the internet. The successor of the Chu family was a mystery in Sea City. Ever since he was born, he was selected to be the Chu family's successor and was nurtured secretly. The Chu family only revealed a little information, so his name and photograph had never been circulated before. It was no wonder she couldn't find any clues despite searching for five years. At this moment, Shen Qianhui drove a Chevrolet and rushed out. Hence, Shen Ruajing didn't have time to think. She then got into her car and chased after her mother. Her mother had lowered herself and helped the Shen family earn so much money through the years. It was useless despite the countless times she persuaded her. Maybe, what would happen later might allow her mother to finally see the true face of matriarch Shen. The two of them then arrived at the Shen family. After parking, Shen Ruajing quickly chased after her mother. Shen Qianhui had a look of joy on her face when she saw that her daughter followed her. Jing Jing, have you thought things through? That's right then, you have to be nicer to your grandmother in the future. After all, we are one family. She then spoke with anticipation, this time, after I get promoted, I will arrange a job for you in the Shen family as well. Shen Ruajing, no need for that. As they spoke, they entered the living room. Madame Lin was sitting in the center seat with a grim look on her face, while matriarch Shen with her silver hair was seated beside Madame Lin with a fawning smile on her face. They were both currently chatting about something. When Shen Qianhui saw this, she couldn't help but feel astonished. Madame Lin is here too? What a rare guest. She politely asked and then hurriedly walked over to matriarch Shen. Mother, the matter about the general manager position. Pack. Before she could finish speaking, matriarch Shen suddenly lifted her arm and ruthlessly slapped her. Shen Qianhui was stunned. She could feel a burning pain on her face. Mother? Matriarch Shen angrily spoke, don't call me mother. I taught you about etiquette and shame, I taught you how to write and read, but I failed to teach you how to be a mother. You pampered Shen Ruajing so much that her character became lawless. 
You even made her commit huge trouble. Matriarch Shen then repeated what had happened on the day of the Chu family's birthday banquet. Shen Qianhui's eyes turned red. Mother, there must be a misunderstanding. Jingjing isn't someone like that. Shen Ruajing who was at the side sighed softly when she heard that. She originally thought that her mother would finally be able to see things clearly after being slapped but didn't expect that this old B asterisk TCH brainwashed her mother again with a few sentences. However, Shen Qianhui was famous for being very protective of her daughter. Even five years ago, when they were expelled from the Shen family, Shen Qianhui had never scolded Shen Ruajing at all. As an orphan, Shen Qianhui thirsted for kinship. This was why she treated her adoptive mother and her own daughter very well. Matriarch Shen sighed. Regardless of whether it was a misunderstanding or not, it's the truth that she beat Miss Lin up. Don't say any more, the Chu family is currently very angry. If you want to suppress this matter, we have to apologize to Madame Lin. Shen Qianhui then turned her gaze onto Madame Lin who was seated in the center. Yet, Madame Lin lowered her head and revealed a shocked expression. Aya, how did my shoe become dirty? Shen Qianhui's body stiffened. Matriarch Shen quickly reminded, why are you in a daze? Quickly help Madame Lin clean her shoes. Shen Qianhui raised her head and stared at Matriarch Shen with disbelief on her face. Matriarch Shen suddenly took a step forward. I had to beg Madame Lin for a very long time just now before she agreed to give you a chance to apologize. Demonstrate your sincerity and she will spare Ruajing. I know you have your pride. But if you cannot bend over, it means I haven't taught you well. If you don't wipe her shoes, I will do it on your behalf. Upon seeing Matriarch Shen was about to kneel and wipe the shoes, Shen Qianhui was so scared that she instantly knelt. Mother. However, at the next moment, her arm was held tightly by someone. Shen Ruajing helped her mother up, and her peach blossom eyes stared at Matriarch Shen with a smile that was not a smile. There was even a hint of mocking in her eyes. At this moment, Matriarch Shen was caught in an awkward position. She didn't want to kneel, but if she stood up, her act would be exposed. Even the emotions she had displayed earlier would be wasted. She ruthlessly glanced at Shen Ruajing. This SL asterisk T had offended the Lin family. Hence, Madame Lin had promised Matriarch Shen that as long as she cooperated to humiliate Shen Qianhui, she wouldn't bring the Shen family into this. As for Shen Ruajing? Shen Ruajing could die for all she cared. Matriarch Shen then stood up straight and grabbed Shen Qianhui's hands before feigning sincerity. Qianhui, I know you feel wronged. I feel heartache too when I see you acting like this. However, this will implicate the entire Shen family. Even if you don't think about the Shen family, you have to consider things for Ruajing. It's already very difficult for her to bring up a child, so if she gets targeted by the Chu family. For Jingjing. Shen Qianhui's tears dripped down her face. Don't need to say any more, I'll wipe. Shen Ruajing frowned. It's useless even if you did so. The Lin clan wouldn't spare us. Shen Qianhui's body was trembling slightly. Jingjing, it's fine. Your grandmother wouldn't lie to us. Shen Ruajing clenched her fists and knew that it was pointless to say more. Hence, she simply watched in silence. Shen Qianhui then took a piece of tissue out from her purse and slowly half knelt before Madame Lin. She stretched out her shivering hand and lifted Madame Lin's shoe, placing it on her knee. She only spoke after wiping it, Madame Lin, I apologize. Madame Lin gazed at her imperiously from her seat. When her husband was younger, she knew he was once in love with Shen Qianhui, and this always caused her to feel resentment. So now when she saw Shen Qianhui acting so lowly, Madame Lin finally burst out into laughter from satisfaction. Matriarch Shen hurriedly asked, Madame Lin, have your anger been appeased? Madame Lin retracted her leg and laughed. Amen, I will tell the Chu family that your Shen family has expelled them, so this matter won't implicate your Shen family. As for Shen Qianhui's family, the Chu family will never spare them. Matriarch Shen, your family has no objections, right? Matriarch Shen immediately spoke, naturally not. I've struck their names off my family register five years ago, so we already have no connection since then. Shen Qianhui stared at the two of them with shock. She felt incredulous disbelief when hearing their words. What did her mother just say? At this moment, someone pulled her up by her arm, helping her to get back onto her feet. Shen Ruajing's eyes glimmered with dark light, and she seemed akin to an azura from hell. Her voice was very cold. Mother, have you seen clearly? If you have seen clearly, take a few steps back in case, you get accidentally injured by me. Seeing that Shen Qianhui was in a daze and didn't seem to have heard her clearly, 
Shinrajing pulled her back two steps before walking up to Madame Lin. She spoke calmly, your shoes aren't cleaned properly. Madame Lin sneered. Why? Do you want to beg for mercy too? Let me tell you, that's impossible. At the next moment. Splash. Shinruajing picked up the fishbowl next to her and splashed it toward Madame Lin. Madame Lin then felt a chill on her head, and something slippery rolled down her cheeks. Hence, she reached out and grabbed onto a goldfish. Realizing what it was, she immediately screamed and jumped up, but she stepped on some water plants and slipped. After that, she dropped to her knees in front of Shen Qianhui with a plop. Shen Ruajing put down the fishbowl and raised her peach blossom eyes. Tisk, there's no need to go to such great courtesy. Madame Lin. Madame Lin only felt overwhelming anger gushing to her heart. She then shouted in a sharp voice, Shen, Rua, Jing. I want you to die a horrible death. Matriarch Shen was also shocked. She hurriedly went to help Madame Lin up and bellowed at Shen Ruajing, you vile person. Even if you don't want to live, don't drag our Shen family down with you. Shen Ruajing looked at her. As a result, her dark and sinister gaze gave Matriarch Shen a fright. Thinking of her granddaughter's carefree personality, Matriarch Shen hurriedly shouted, Men! The nanny and security guards rushed in. Matriarch Shen pointed at them. Chase this mother and daughter out. Don't allow them to come here ever again. One more thing, Shen Qianhui, you're fired. You aren't allowed to go to the company anymore. It was at this moment that Shen Qianhui finally found her voice back. Mom? I've just negotiated a big deal for the company, and the contract is going to be signed soon. At this moment, the naive daughter wanted to use this fact to salvage a little of their mother and daughter relationship. However, Matriarch Shen sneered and said, That's right. You helped us negotiate a collaboration with the Z Corporation, so the Shen family won't have to worry about food and clothing for the next few decades. Just let your younger brother take care of the contract signing. Why is there a need to keep you? Scram! The shock in Shen Qianhui's eyes finally faded, and a hint of bitterness gradually rose. She felt as if she had fallen into a world of ice and snow and suddenly could not feel any warmth at all. Her body gradually began to tremble. But at this moment, a warm and strong hand grabbed her shoulder. Shen Qianhui slowly turned around and saw that Jing Jin had arrived. The man's figure was tall and straight, and his facial features were deep. His tall body seemed to give her strength at this moment. He took a step forward, his broad shoulders protecting his wife and daughter behind him. Moreover, his peach blossom eyes, which were the same as Shen Ruajing's, were no longer as playful as before. A deep and powerful voice then rang out. Matriarch, on the account that you brought Qianhui up, I can choose not to pursue the things that happened in the past. From today onward, our family of five will no longer have anything to do with the Shen family. I hope that you'll never regret how merciless you've acted today. After saying this, he had his arm around Shen Qianhui's shoulder to support her, taking huge strides toward the door. Matriarch Shen sneered and said, Those who don't know might think that our son-in-law is some kind of impressive figure. A small-time actor. Oh, wait, he can't even be an actor now, right? How can an old man like him make me regret? A hint of mockery flashed in Shen Ruajing's eyes as she followed her parents out. When they reached the parking lot, she heard Jing Jin asking for credit, Honey, how was my performance just now? Did I display the disposition of how one shouldn't bully the young, ah, uh, no, the youth for being poor? Shen Qianhui, who was in a low mood, said, yes, it was very good. Then honey, you'll have to work hard and start your own company to surpass the Shen family. Shen Qianhui was stunned. Start my own company? Jing Jin said confidently, that's right, honey, you have to earn more money. After that, invest in a drama for me so that I don't have to look at other people's faces anymore. After I become a well-known big celebrity, I will let that old B asterisk TCH regret what she has done. Shen Qianhui stared at him. She, who loved to do business, was chased out of the Shen family's company and was feeling lost. However, at this moment, she seemed to have found the meaning of life, albeit vaguely. However, she quickly reacted and frowned. Let's not talk about where I can get the capital for starting a company. Let's focus on how we've offended the Chu family first. The Chu family was a great power in Sea City. If the Chu family were to spread the word, who would dare to cooperate with them? Shen Ruajing spoke up, this is a misunderstanding. I'll go to the Chu family to explain things clearly. Shen Qianhui nodded. You're right. The Chu family isn't unreasonable. I'll go and apologize on your behalf. She didn't want to let her daughter suffer humiliation and feel aggrieved. It would be fine if it was her, but not her daughter. 
Shen Ruajing said, No need, I'll go by myself. Shen Qianhui wanted to say more, but Jing Zhen suddenly held onto his stomach, his countenance turning pale. Honey, my stomach hurts. Accompany me home first. Huh? Will you be able to hold on until we reach home? Why not just do it here? No, the Shen family's place is dirty. Shen Qianhui quickly helped Jing Zhen into the car. After that, she stepped on the gas pedal fiercely and sped off. Shen Ruajing was left standing there, her lips twitching. At this moment, her phone rang. After answering the call, she heard the same frivolous male voice. Sis, you guys were chased out by the Shen family? They are really blind. If it wasn't because of our mom's effort in sustaining the Shen family's business, how could they have developed to the stage they are at today? Our mom has really been aggrieved. Shen Ruajing said, she's my mom. Sai, your mom is my mom. It's the same thing. But since that's the case, our Z Corporation's cooperation with the Shen family can be called off, right? N. There's one more thing. Someone is offering a high price to purchase Professor Z's patent for the biological petri dish. Would you like to meet the buyer? I'm not free. You've already retired. What can you be busy with? Looking for my children's father. Shen Ruajing hung up the call and headed straight for the Chu Corporation. The Chu Corporation was located in the center of Sea City, having a magnificent building that soared up to the skies, like a god looking down on all living beings. Shen Ruajing entered and politely spoke to the receptionist, Hello, I wish to meet Chu Tsichen. The receptionist asked, May I ask for your name? Do you have an appointment? I don't. Please help to make a call and tell him that I'm Shen Ruajing. Shen Ruajing was certain that her daughter was still with him and that Chu Tsichen would definitely meet her. However, when the receptionist heard her name, she displayed a disdainful expression. You're Shen Ruajing? Miss Lin has given us the instructions to not allow you to go and harass Mr. Chu. Please leave immediately. Otherwise, we won't go easy on you. She then beckoned and some security guards came rushing over. Shen Ruajing frowned as she contemplated if she should fight her way in. However, the receptionist smiled coldly and said, Do you think that Mr. Chu is someone that anyone can meet as they like? At the same time, on the highest level of the building, Lu Chen was smiling apologetically. Bro Chen, Professor Z is really too elusive. His phone even has the highest level of encryption system, and we aren't able to locate him at all. Otherwise, we wouldn't have asked you to do this personally. Chu Tsichen's well-defined fingers quickly typed on the computer keyboard. The light from the screen shone on his face, accentuating the determination in his eyes as if everything was under his control. Bang! As the enter key was pressed for the last time, Lu Qing put his head close to the screen. Bro Chen is really amazing. To think that you can even break through this firewall. As expected of a computer expert. Hurry up and let me see where the location of Professor Z's phone is. At the next moment, his expression was that of surprise. Isn't this our company's entrance? At the Chu Corporation's lobby, Shen Ruajing narrowed her eyes and looked at the security guards surrounding her. This group of people carried electric batons. They had clearly come prepared. The Chu Corporation's security team wasn't to be underestimated. On the other hand, the receptionist raised her chin slightly and said sarcastically, Shen Ruajing, Miss Lin is about to get engaged to Mr. Chu, yet you actually tried to create trouble for them. You're really shameless. At this moment, there was a commotion at the elevator's entrance. A few bodyguards in black walked out and stood on both sides domineeringly with their hands behind their backs. Chu Tsichen was dressed in a black suit, and his figure was as straight as a javelin. His sharp figure and determined face made those who didn't know better think that he came from the army. Five years ago, he still had the disposition of an immature guy, but now, he was filled with the aura of a tough man. Shen Ruajing, why is it you again? Lu Cheng, who was wearing a flowery shirt, had his hands in his pockets. He walked over and frowned. Let me tell you, Bro Chen and I are busy looking for someone today and don't have time to talk to you. Don't fail to know what's good for you. Professor Z had always been mysterious, and very few people in the outside world knew of his true identity. However, did he suddenly come to their company's entrance because he knew that they were interested in purchasing the biological petri dish? However, there were many people passing through the lobby, with countless people coming to the Chu Corporation for work. Which of them was that major character? Shen Ruajing ignored him and walked straight to Chu Tsichen. However, his bodyguards were well experienced and stopped any possibility of her approaching from all angles. Shen Ruajing could only stand at a spot two meters away from him, sizing up his calmness, and saying, the DNA report is out. The children are yours. 
Chu Xichen's phoenix eyes narrowed slightly. However, Lu Qing said in surprise, to think that you've even prepared a fake report? Shen Ruajing was about to say something when her phone rang again. She was really getting a lot of calls today. She frowned and was about to hang up the call in annoyance when she saw the incoming number. She then accepted the call. The person on the other end said something, and she threw Chu Xichen a glance. After that, she inhaled deeply and said, I'll be there right away. After hanging up the call, her voice turned cold. If you don't trust my report, why don't you go do one yourself? Chu Xichen, I hope that you can contact me after doing the DNA test and then explain to me what is going on. She threw a glance at the receptionist and sneered, moreover, I didn't know that entry to the Chu Corporation is decided by Lin Wanru. After saying this, she seemed to have something urgent to attend to and turned to head out. Through the glass door, she could be seen casually picking up her helmet and driving off on her motorbike. The series of actions were done smoothly, looking very cool. Lu Qing couldn't help but sigh, as expected of an unattainable beauty in the past. Eh? I almost forgot the important thing. Bro Chen, hurry up and check in which direction Professor Z is at. Chu Xichen held up his phone but realized that on his tracking software, the small red dot that represented Professor Z disappeared after a few flashes. Lu Cheng's shoulders instantly collapsed. It's over. We were discovered. Chu Xichen put away his phone, looking very calm. There was no disappointment in his pitch black eyes, instead he looked coldly toward the receptionist. The receptionist was so scared that she lowered her head and said meekly, Mr. Chu, it was Miss Lin. Chu Xichen felt a deep disgust at the mention of Lin Wanru. He then ordered coldly, you're fired. After saying this, Chu Xichen took large strides out. Lu Qing followed behind him. Bro Chen, where are you going? Home. What for? Aren't you looking for Professor Z anymore? Lu Qing suddenly realized something. You can't possibly really be going back to do a DNA test with that young girl, could you? But that's true. Shen Ruajing isn't a fool. If they weren't your children, why would she cling to you like she's crazy? But you have to be careful regarding the organization you choose to do the DNA test with. It's to prevent anyone from fiddling with the test report. Chu Xichen paused in his footsteps and glanced at him. Chu Xiaoming. What? She has a name. Lu Qing. She's not your daughter yet, but you're already being so protective of her? Shen Ruajing rode on her motorbike to the Golden Bilingual Kindergarten. At the entrance, the small Chu Tianai was hugging a big school bag and had his head lowered, looking like an abandoned puppy. The gentle teacher said apologetically, Little Ye's mother, I'm really sorry. We received a call from the Chu family to process the withdrawal for your child. Moreover, with the Chu family giving the word, there shouldn't be any kindergartens in C City who would accept Little Yi. Her eyes were red. I've tried my best. Chu Tianai held her hand. Teacher, I can't bear to part with you. After I grow up, I'll open a kindergarten and let you be the principal there. How about it? His words made the teacher's heart ache for him even more. Shen Ruajing picked up the child and put him in the passenger seat. When they reached the turn, the child was still shouting, Teacher, I'll miss you. Shen Ruajing. Stop with the pretense. Chu Tianai, who seemed to be dejected earlier, instantly changed his expression into a beam. He grinned and said, I finally don't have to go to school anymore. This feels so great. He had long since been envious of the fact that his younger sister didn't have to go to kindergarten. But daddy is too bad. The kindergarten belongs to the Chu family, however, not only did he not waive off my school fees, but he's even bullying me. That's too much. When they arrived home, Chu Tianai got off the motorbike and ran into his room. He wanted to go ask his younger sister what was going on with their daddy. However, he had just picked up his phone when he saw a message sent by his sister. Bro, daddy has another son. Chu Tianai. What was this situation? He replied, is that child by your side? Hurry up and chat with him the way I taught you. Try to get some information from him. I want to know all the information about him. In the Chu Manor's living room. After receiving her brother's message, Chu Xiaoming's pupils contracted. She then lifted her head and looked at Chu Yu who had a straight face on. Chu Xiaoming, who had social phobia, frowned. How should she initiate a chat? She thought about it and suddenly spoke up, Yu. Chu Yu raised his head abruptly and looked toward her. Was the aloof little sister finally willing to talk to him? Then, he heard Chu Xiaoming's meek question. What is your relationship with daddy? Chu Yu? He was very puzzled as he replied. Father and son. Oh. Seeing him staring at her, Chu Xiaoming then asked nervously, then what's your surname? 
My surname is Chu. Oh. Chu Xiaomeng hurriedly lowered her head, avoiding the other party's gaze. She didn't see the disappointment in Chu Yu's eyes. Why was she ignoring him again? Were his replies not good enough? When matriarch Chu, who was sitting at the side, listened to their conversation, she tried to hold in her smile as she looked at Chu Xiaomeng lovingly. The child was wearing a white gauze dress and sitting docilely on the sofa. She was hugging that dinosaur cloth doll and had her head lowered, her long lashes casting a shadow on her face. At this moment, her hands held onto a big phone as she sent messages to someone. She looked really adorable. Why was this not her granddaughter? Click. The door opened and Chu Xichen strode in. His gaze landed straight on Chu Xiaoming, and that woman's words flashed in his mind. If you don't trust my report, why don't you go do one yourself? When the woman spoke, her expression didn't seem to be fake, and he actually felt that her words were true. However, when his gaze swept over Chu Yu, he immediately abolished the thought. He had only slept with a single woman, so how was it possible that he would have two children? That would be too absurd. He frowned and directly entered the study. Matriarch Chu looked at his departing back and wanted to say something but hesitated. Her son always showed a strict face. Actually, he should try to be more intimate with his own son. However, Chu Xichen had been sent overseas when he was young, so their relationship wasn't close. It wasn't too good for her to keep pressing him for some matters. At this moment, her phone rang and she picked it up. After that, Lin Wanru's crying voice rang out. Auntie, she is really adamant about not giving face to the Chu family. She hit me yesterday and hit my mom today. My mom went to the Shen family for the sake of the Chu family's reputation, wanting them to make a public apology so as to not stain the reputations of the young masters of the Chu family. However, I didn't expect her to be so arrogant and even say that she isn't afraid of the Chu family. Auntie, if we still don't do anything to her despite this, wouldn't that mean anyone in the future can just carry a child here and claim that the child has the Chu bloodline? Wouldn't the Chu family become the greatest joke in Sea City then? When Matriarch Chu finished hearing her cries, she fell silent for a long time before speaking. I understand. Just as she hung up, the butler entered and spoke in a low voice, Ma'am, Miss Lin used the name of our Chu family to force Shin Ruajing's child to leave school. Matriarch Chu's eyes gleamed coldly. No wonder Lin Wanru called and cried to her. So, she had made a move in advance. Even before Lin Wanru got married into the Chu family, she was already using the name of the Chu family as she willed outside. Was someone like her suitable to become the future matriarch of the Chu family? Matriarch Chu started rubbing her temples due to a headache. Why would her beloved grandchild have such a mother? After that, she felt some heartache for Chu Xiaoming. Why was such an obedient child forced to quit school? Chu Xiaoming, who was forced to quit school, was currently using her phone and typing a message. Big bro, I've checked. His surname is Chu and he is also a son of our father. In the Shen family, Chu Tianai who was hiding in his room heard the notification from his phone. He immediately took his phone, but after seeing the message, he suddenly felt unwell and typed mockingly. Who isn't a son of our father ah? Chu Xiaoming, me, I'm father's daughter. Chu Tianai? He quietly put his phone down. Indeed, getting his younger sister who had social phobia to investigate was truly unreliable. At this moment, the sound of knocking rang out from below. Shen Ruajing was currently wiping her motorbike and saw Lin Wanru leading a group of people standing outside her home. They were in uniform and looked as though they were civil servants. Lin Wanru took out a certificate and solemnly introduced, Shen Ruajing, we are staff from the Children Protection Agency. We received a report saying that there's child abuse here, so we came to investigate. Shen Ruajing? This Lin Wanru was truly like a ghost that was determined to haunt her. She narrowed her eyes and asked, who was the one that established this agency? Lin Wanru continued with a straight face, we are a private organization formed by the allowance between the Lin Corporation in Sea City and a few other great corporations. We are led by the Chu family, and our agency has lawyers, doctors, and other professionals that will provide children's service for free. She took out a notebook. Shen Ruajing, I have a few questions for you, so please answer them honestly. What is your current job? Shen Ruajing put the cloth in her hands down, and her beautiful face displayed a look of pondering before she slowly spoke, self-employed. Lin Wanru's lips curled and made a note. So, you don't have a job now. According to our investigations, both your mother and father have no jobs either. So your entire family has no income. We have also checked with your neighbors and know that you have two children. 
however, the little girl would often be locked up at home, and you refused to allow her to go out. Why is this so? Shen Ruajing suppressed her anger. Because she doesn't like it. How can that be? All kids love to play outside. By doing this, you are clearly showing favoritism for males. Now, on the grounds of suspecting that you are abusing your daughter, I want you to get her to come out and meet me. She's not at home. Lin Wanru's attitude became even more forceful. If she doesn't go out, how can she not be at home? Shen Ruajing, please cooperate with us. If you reject, the consequences will be. Shen Ruajing raised her eyebrows and coldly asked, what will the consequences be? From what I know, people from private organizations cannot barge into private property. Seeing this, Lin Wanru was so scared that she took a step back. However, her attitude remained very arrogant. We have a working relationship with the police. Right now, we have sufficient evidence, so we have requested the police to come and save the abused child. During the investigation period, the children will be sent to an orphanage to be taken care of. Her eyes then flashed with a sinister light. Oh right, I often do charity work in the orphanage. Don't worry, I will take good care of your two children. As the sound of her voice faded, the sounds of police alarms rang out. Lin Wanru sneered. I know you are a capable fighter, but you can't possibly stop them, right? After all, assaulting a police officer is a crime. Shen Ruajing's tightly clenched fist slowly relaxed. She then watched them barging into the house and rushing upstairs. Bang! The children's room door was knocked open. After that, the group of people rushed in, and Lin Wanru also entered complacently. However, they discovered that the room was empty. Shen Ruajing's lips slowly curled. I've said that they are not home. Lin Wanru felt extremely infuriated. Where are they then? Oh, they went to look for their father. Lin Wanru's heart suddenly turned cold. Had those two bastards already met Chu Tsichen? In that case, the consequences would be unimaginable. At this moment, Chu Tianai who had managed to escape in a cab was thumping his little chest. Luckily, he was smart enough. After his mother cast a look at him, he directly ran out from the back door, or he would have been captured. He was going to look for his father now. He could also take this chance to investigate what the hell was going on with the other son of his father. The car soon arrived at the Chu family. And just so coincidentally, Chu Tsichen was preparing to head out, and his bodyguards were waiting at the door. After that, he saw Chu Tianai playing with stones not far away. Chu Tianai would lift his head occasionally to look at the fleet of cars here. One of the guards grew wary. Which family does this child belong to? Why is he here? Lu Qing leaned against his car and dug his ears. When he heard this, he couldn't help but mock, even a five-year-old can scare you guys to such an extent. He can't possibly be here to acknowledge Bro Chen as his father, right? The few guards also couldn't help but laugh when they heard this. At this moment, Chu Tsichen walked out. Everyone immediately crowded around him and surveyed the surroundings warily. When Chu Tsichen was about to enter the car, the little fellow playing with stones in the distance suddenly ran over. His speed was so quick that no one could react. When they came back to their senses, that little boy was already hugging Chu Tsichen's leg. His similar phoenix-like eyes akin to Chu Tsichen were shining brightly as he shouted, Daddy! Everyone? Chu Tsichen? Chu Tianai blinked and shouted again, Daddy, I am Chu Tianai. My mommy is Shen Ruajing, and I'm fraternal twins with my sister. I miss you so much. Chu Tsichen. First, it was Chu Xiaoming, followed by Shen Ruajing, and now there was a Chu Tianai? So if he still refused to acknowledge them, would another three children pop out? He suddenly felt rage surging in his heart and carried Chu Tianai up. He decided to do the DNA testing. He wanted to see how Shen Ruajing would continue pestering him after the results were out. Just when Chu Tsichen was planning to look for a DNA testing institution, a car hastily parked outside in a rush and Lin Wanru got off. Her face was filled with anxiousness as she walked toward Chu Tsichen. However, she was blocked by the guards when she reached a distance of 5 meters. Chu Tsichen specially instructed his guards not to let her get close to him. Lin Wanru shouted loudly, Tsichen, I have something to say. Chu Tsichen ignored her and entered his car with Chu Tianai. Upon seeing this, Lin Wanru shouted loudly, I know who is the father of the child you are holding. Chu Tsichen paused his steps. In the Chu Manor's living room, Chu Tsichen and Matriarch Chu sat on the sofa, while Lin Wanru sat at the side and looked very restrained. Her buttocks only filled one third of the chair, and her head was lowered, not daring to meet the eyes of the other two. Matriarch Chu looked at her. Since you know the answer, why didn't you say it earlier? 
Lin Wanru lifted her head and saw a pair of penetrating eyes that felt like they could see her thoughts. Hence, she was so frightened that she started stammering, I, I have forgotten this earlier, but after seeing how Shen Ruajing was confidently saying that her children belonged to Tsichen, I suddenly remembered this information. Five years ago, I saw young Master M.O. at the Wilson Hotel. Mother, do you need me for something? A man around twenty plus of age walked in. His voice arrived before he did. He bore twenty percent to thirty percent resemblance to Chu Tsichen, but his personality was completely different. Chu Chimo's eyes were filled with liveliness, and he had an arrogant aura. He then sat openly beside Matriarch Chu as he asked, What's the matter? I was drinking with a few good buddies of mine. Matriarch Chu glared at him. Five years ago, when that incident happened to your older brother, were you at the Wilson Hotel? Chu Chimo shook his head. How would I know? It has been so long ago. Chu Tsichen coldly said, Think carefully. Chu Chimo sat up straight. He wasn't afraid of his mother but was deeply scared of his calm-looking older brother. I think so. Chu Tsichen looked at him. Chu Chimo shivered. I recall now. Yes, that day I went with my buddies to play a game. After that, I drank too much. Matriarch Chu was very disappointed in this son of hers. And you had a s asterisk soul relationship with a woman? Chu Chimo blushed and jumped up from the sofa. How did you know? He was famous for being a flirty individual and he liked beauties. However, only a few people knew that because of his mother's nurturing, he only flirted with the beauties but never touched them. However, five years ago, he failed to control himself after drinking too much and allowed a woman to take advantage of him. He hadn't mentioned this to anyone. Lin Wanru silently heaved a sigh of relief. Five years ago, Chu Chimo was actually the target she had selected after extensive planning. That night, she put a drug in Chu Chimo's cup and planned to lead him to another room. However, on their way there, they saw a tall figure walking out of a room. That man would stun anyone with his looks when they saw him. Just when Lin Wanru was thinking about who that person was, she heard Chu Chimo mumbling in a daze, Big bro? She was then enlightened. So, that man was none other than the mysterious successor of the Chu family. After that, she instantly had no more interest in Chu Chimo. After tossing him into a room, she spoke to a guard, randomly find a woman to settle his needs. She then tailed Chu Tsichen and planned everything that happened next. She would absolutely not permit Shen Ruajing to destroy her future. Lin Wanru's gaze flashed. Young Master M.O., the woman that night was Shen Ruajing. She already brought the children here. Chu Chimo was stunned. I'm actually so awesome and have slept with such a goddess? Although Shen Ruajing's reputation was tattered, she was the goddess in the heart of every man in Sea City. She was simply too beautiful. A single smile from her could stir their hearts. Sadly, her personality wasn't good. She was lonesome and arrogant, and there were even rumors saying that she liked to keep a gigolo and wasn't fond of wealthy young masters like them. Lin Wanru? Was there something wrong with this reaction? Chu Tsichen suddenly felt unhappy when he saw the complacent look on his younger brother's face. Matriarch Chu stared at this useless son of hers, but her heart softened when she thought of Chu Xiaoming. Our Chu family definitely has to acknowledge the children. But what do you plan to do with Shen Ruajing? Marry her? Lin Wanru stared at her in astonishment with fists that were tightly clenched. When she brought a child here, the Chu family kept giving excuses and even refused to set an engagement for her. However, Shen Ruajing could marry into the Chu family immediately just because she had children with their bloodline? Based on what? She bit her lips and suddenly added, according to my knowledge, because Shen Ruajing failed to find the guy that impregnated her, she vented all her anger onto her children. This is the evidence collected by the Children Protection Agency. Lin Wanru placed the evidence before them and sighed, there are also pieces of information provided by Matriarch Shen. She said that ever since Shen Ruajing was young, her temper was quirky and she was incompetent in learning. In addition, Lin Wanru paused and lowered her voice, Matriarch Shen also told me a piece of shocking news. When she was 10 years old, she was abducted by someone into the mountains and only came back after she was 13. At that time, her entire body was stained with blood. She also refused to let people get near her, so she might have encountered some psychological impact when she went missing. Chu Chimo shouted loudly, what psychological impact can there be? A girl being abducted into the mountains, her story must have been the same as what was often reported, the mountain people wanted her to be a child bride. No wonder her reputation is so shitty. If I marry her, my brothers will surely laugh at me. Mother, I think she wants money by bringing the children to our doorstep. 
We might as well keep the children and give her a sum of money to drive her away. Chutsichin quietly listened. Such a beautiful girl was abducted at the age of 10. He then grew increasingly unhappy when he saw the look of disdain on Chuchimo's face. He suddenly spoke in an icy tone, the children might not be yours, let's do a DNA test. Lin Wanru nervously spoke, this child really resembles Chimo, I think there's no need for a DNA test. No we have to do it. Chu Chimo grew serious. Where's the child? I'm going to take his sample now and get someone to conduct the test immediately. What if the child belongs to someone? I don't want to be a stupid fool and raise a child for another man. He's upstairs. Chu Tsichen also stood up. Since young, he had always been someone who disliked interfering in the matters of others. But even so, he said, I'll go with you. Hearing this, Lin Wanru nervously gulped down a mouthful of saliva, yet she didn't dare to stop them for fear of arousing suspicions. She could only follow behind them. In the kids' room, Chu Tianai and Chu Yu were both staring at each other. Chu Tianai was surveying Chu Yu, who wore a custom-made suit and looked like a little gentleman. As Shen Ruajing had always emphasized good bearing, Chu Tianai knew he was at a disadvantage here. Chu Tianai was worried as he thought, would daddy give me less inheritance because of this? Chu Yu had a straight look on his face, but his eyes drifted toward Chu Tianya's head. The little girl's brother's curly hair was simply too adorable. He actually wanted to twist Chu Tianya's hair. Meanwhile, Chu Xiaoming hid in the corner and was looking at the book in her hands. She mentally chanted in her heart. Don't look at me, don't look at me. The three of them had their own thoughts and at this moment, the door was pushed open. Chu Tsichen entered. His gaze then swept past Chu Xiaomeng and landed on Chu Tianai. The family doctor behind him said, take a sample from him. Chu Tianai? Chu Tianai quickly shielded his head. Daddy, it's very painful to pluck a strand of hair out. The little fellow blinked his eyes. But for the sake of reuniting with daddy, I'm willing to give a strand of my hair. It's just that I will require many nutrients to grow another strand. He lowered his head and spoke in a pitiful manner, my sister and I were abandoned by our father when we were born. Our mommy worked very hard and had to shift bricks from day to night to support us. But even so, we are very poor and she had no money to buy supplements for us. Chutsichin silently looked at this kid's chubby face but didn't speak. Chuchimo, who was behind him, felt heartache and said, I have money, how much do you want? I will give them to you. One million for one strand of hair. Chu Chimo, sure. I'll withdraw the cash for you now. At the next second, Chu Tianai slid a card to Chu Chimo. There's no need for things to be so troublesome. I have a bank card. You can just directly transfer the money to my account. Chu Chimo took out his phone and transferred the money to Presley. After he confirmed the transfer was successful, Chu Tianai stretched his head out again. I have many strands of hair. Do you want to buy a few more strands? Chu Chimo? The family doctor took Chu Tianya's hair sample and directly went to the institution to find the machine to do the test. Earlier, he had taken a sample from Chu Chimo. Chu Chimo and Chu Tsichen then sat together on the sofa and looked at them while waiting for the results. Lin Wanru also followed them in. Tsichen, I know of an institution that can do the DNA test quicker. Why don't we? No need. Chu Tsichen rejected her. I only believe in my own institution. Lin Wanru clenched her fists and smiled bitterly at Chu Tsichen. After that, she looked at Chu Yu. Little Yu, mommy is here to see you. Chu Yu rolled his eyes. Lin Wanru then carried him and walked out. It has been a long time since we met, let us go out for a chat. Chu Tsichen frowned but didn't say anything to stop her. The door closed again and the atmosphere in the room fell silent. At this moment, Chu Chimo felt a little thirsty and his eyes landed on the plate of watermelon before Chu Xiaoming. He tactfully asked, little girl, is the watermelon sweet? Chu Xiaoming, who was called out, started shivering. She slowly lifted her head, and her confused gaze showed a hint of hesitation before she unwillingly took a piece of watermelon, and ate a bite before she answered, it's sweet. She then continued reading. Chu Chimo? Chu Tianai then moved toward him and asked, uncle, do you like to eat watermelons? Chu Chimo nodded. Chu Tianai sighed. My father disappeared when we were born and our mother had to work hard from day to night to sweep the streets. Didn't you say she was shifting bricks before? After she shifted bricks, she went to sweep the streets. My mommy is very poor, so my younger sister has never eaten a watermelon before. Hence, she's very protective of food, so a piece of watermelon will cost $5,000. 
They are sweet and crunch, both the old and young can enjoy them. A mobile phone was placed before Chuchimo with a QR code for bank transfer. Chuchimo? After transferring the money, he ate the watermelon and surveyed the two children. The more he looked at them, the more heartache he felt. AI, I wonder how much they have suffered during these years. This was why he paid so readily. After all, he owed it to his children. Chutsichin. Chu Chimo suddenly started chortling, Big bro, I've always lost to you in all aspects since we were young. However, you only have a single child that came to our doorstep to find you, while I have two. So, I'm stronger in this aspect, ha ha ha. Chutsichin wanted to ignore such nonsense. He also grew unhappy for some reason. Let's wait for the results to be out. Down below. The butler spoke softly, I've investigated. It's true that Shinruajin was abducted when she was 10 years old. That's not important. Even if she was abducted, this isn't her fault. Matriarch Chu looked at the evidence that Lin Wanru provided and spoke angrily, the most important things are these. If she's so venomous to abuse her children, we must not spare her easily. The butler said, could this be the reason why the little young miss is afraid to meet people? Upon mentioning Chu Xiaoming, Matriarch Chu frowned. Immediately arrange for a few doctors to do a comprehensive body and psychological checkup for the children. Lin Wanru was carrying Chu Yu down the stairs and heard these words coincidentally. She then spoke in worry, Auntie, the two children are still so young. If Shinruajing Jing threatened them, they wouldn't dare to speak the truth. In addition, what if Shinruajing Jing uses this as an excuse to pester Tsichin? What if Chu Yu got frightened? Matriarch Chu frowned before adding, before the truth is out, do not allow Shinruajing Jing to enter our house. She is also not permitted to meet the two children. Lin Wanru then heaved a sigh of relief. As long as Shin Ruajing couldn't enter the Chu Manor, she would have no way to explain things. Lin Wanru then smiled. Auntie, I'll bring little Yu out for a meal. During these years, Lin Wanru often visited Chu Yu, so Matriarch Chu didn't stop her. Lin Wanru brought Chu Yu to a private restaurant and entered a VIP room. After the dishes were served, Lin Wanru smiled at Chu Yu. Little Yu, you have to keep reminding your daddy about mommy, okay? Tell him to allow me to enter the Chu Manor. Can you remember this? Chutsichin only permitted her to enter the Chu Manor once a month. Now, she wanted to head to the Chu Manor more often, so she could settle those two little bastards to eliminate future trouble. However, Chu Yu didn't even lift his head. Lin Wanru continued, Also, for those two children, you have to know that they are here to seize your inheritance from you. You have to think of ways to drive them away. Their mother is a bad person, so if she goes to the Chu Manor, you must not allow her to meet your daddy. Understand? Chu Yu still didn't speak. Are you dumb? Lin Wanru suddenly got angered, and this caused Chu Yu's eating motion to slow down. She still wanted to say something, but her phone rang at this moment. After looking at the number, she turned and picked up the call. She didn't notice that a small figure slipped past her and walked to the entrance. The door was silently opened, and he went out through the gap. On the streets, Chu Yu lowered his head and walked alone. Why would the mothers of others dote on their children? but Lin Wanru would always instruct him to do something whenever they met. Thinking about this, he was in a very bad mood and didn't check the traffic lights before he crossed the road. Beep, beep, beep. All of a sudden, a fierce whistle sounded. Chu Yu turned his head and saw a huge truck charging over. The blinding headlights caused Chu Yu to subconsciously lift his hand to block his eyes. But he had no time to dodge. He could even sense the heat waves from the truck. Was he going to die? But right at this moment. BZZ. A motorbike turned the corner, and the woman wearing a helmet floored the gas pedal, raising her speed to the limit. She sped toward him with the speed of the wind. After that, she bent and pulled him into a warm embrace, while her motorbike brushed past the truck. However, the motorbike's speed was now too fast, so the woman had to stomp on the brake. Screech. The tire rubbed against the ground, and the woman decisively carried him and jumped off the bike. The instant they landed, the woman hugged him tightly and rolled a few times before finally stopping. The motorbike had also overturned, and its wheels were spinning uselessly in the air. Chu Yu was stunned. He then saw the woman taking off her helmet before asking him in a clear but cold voice. Little fellow, are you all right? He widened his eyes and his empty heart was suddenly filled. After Shin Ruajing saw that he was fine, she then glanced at her leg. Earlier, Things were too sudden and her jump from her motorbike had caused a huge wound on her leg. The wound constituted an extremely shocking sight. Half an hour later, Chutsichin brought Matriarch Chu along as they rushed to the hospital. 
Matriarch Chu asked, How's Chuyu? Is he okay? The bodyguard lowered his head. The little young master is fine and merely has some scares. However, he refuses to leave the woman that saved him. Matriarch Chu heaved a sigh of relief. Quickly bring me to the benefactor. In the future, she's the benefactor of our Chu family. The bodyguards led Matriarch Chu to the ward and explained what had happened. We were too far and couldn't rush over in time. It was that woman on the motorbike who rushed over. If she hesitated just a little, I'm afraid both she and the little young master might have. The group of people reached the ward and pushed the door open. They only saw Chu Yu's little body sleeping on the bed, but the woman who saved him had disappeared. There was a note on the cabinet beside the bed with some words written on them, no need for thanks. At the back of the hospital, a black-colored sedan was parked there. Shen Ruajing limped her way out and got into the car. The man who was driving was named Lu Hui. He was roughly 25 years old and had bright teeth and red lips, which caused him to resemble a girl. If one listened to his voice closely, they would be able to discover that he was none other than the person who called her earlier. Boss, you discarded your beloved motorbike, so it can be seen that the situation was very urgent. But why did you have to gamble with your life? What were you aiming for? Shen Ruajing gingerly moved her legs. Her peach blossom eyes closed as she leaned against the leather seat. She then asked in a lazy manner, what happened to my bike? I sent it for repairs. Lu Hui saw Shen Ruajing's expression through the rearview window before he continued weakly, previously, we had a discussion about the biological petri dish patent. Have you considered it? The other party is willing to pay quite a high price. I didn't consider it. Shen Ruajing wasn't in the mood to talk about this. Hence, Lu Hui could only shut up. AI, who would have thought that Professor Z, an internationally famous microbiologist, was actually this young woman? Yet, she simply didn't give a damn about money. Others wanted to give her money to earn, but she refused it. She could be willful because she had many patents. When Shen Ruajing reached home, her parents were already asleep. She then entered her room and removed the gauze. After a simple cleaning, she took out a small unlabeled bottle and used the medicine inside to apply to her wound. Her wound instantly stopped hurting. Only then did Shen Ruajing lie down. Actually, she didn't understand what was happening back then. When she saw that child, she thought that it was Chu Tianai, so she didn't hesitate to charge over. The situation then was more urgent than what she imagined. However, that child she saved was really adorable. He kept tugging her sleeves and refused to let go, wanting to bring her to the hospital. When she was dressing her wound, she didn't even frown, but the little child was crying so badly on her behalf. There was no solution, so she could only tap a few of his acupoints and make him fall asleep. It was only then did she finally manage to leave. She originally planned to go to the Chu family but decided not to after all that had happened. She would make a trip tomorrow morning instead, and at that time, the DNA report should also be out. The next morning after Shen Ruajing woke up, she drove straight to the Chu family. The atmosphere there was currently very lively. Lin Wanru came early in the morning and hugged Chu Yu as she kept sobbing. Little Yu, how could you run out just because mommy didn't satisfy your request? Also, you didn't even tell me you were going home and caused me to keep looking for you the entire night. Chu Yu expressionlessly pushed her away. Matriarch Chu coldly snorted. When little Yu is with me, he's very obedient and sensible, but why did he want to run away when he went out with you? Lin Wanru sobbed and wiped away her fake tears. A kid will always be stubborn in front of their mother. Auntie, little Yu must be badly frightened. Can I stay here a few days to accompany him? Matriarch Chu hesitated when she heard this. Chu Tsichen had made it very clear to forbid Lin Wanru from staying in the Chu Manor overnight. However, children would always tend to look for their mothers when they were not well. Lin Wanru felt that she had a chance, and just when she was about to say something more, Chu Yu suddenly spoke, No. I don't want her. I hate her. Go away. Lin Wanru's countenance instantly turned gloomy. When Matriarch Chu saw her expression, she strode to the door with great momentum. I'll send you out. Lin Wanru could only follow her reluctantly. After the two of them left, the door was pushed open once more, and Chu Tianai and Chu Xiaoming entered. Chu Tianai then grumbled, Your mommy is really loathsome. Chu Yu lowered his head. He felt that it was really embarrassing to have such a mother. Chu Tianai then climbed onto his bed and sat down. He shook his leg and boasted, My mommy is different. She's cool and charming, knows everything, and is the most beautiful woman in the world. Chu Yu immediately recalled the woman who had saved him yesterday. 
He rebutted, nonsense, the beautiful Andi that saved me yesterday is definitely prettier than your mommy. Chu Tianai was unhappy. How can that be possible? I've never met someone more awesome than my mommy. Chu Yu snorted. The beautiful Andi is very impressive with her motorbiking skills. My mommy is very impressive too. Chu Yu, that beautiful Andi also knows how to tap acupoints. She tapped a few of mine and I fell asleep. My mommy knows that too. The beautiful Andi smells very fragrant and her body is very soft. My mommy is fragrant and soft too. Chu Yu was unhappy. The beautiful Andi is the best woman in the world. I'm going to make daddy marry her. If daddy refuses to do so, I will marry her after I grow up. Chu Ti and I grew anxious. No way. Daddy has to marry my mommy, my mommy is the best. Sis, I'm correct, right? Chu Xiaoming, who was called out, was currently hugging her cloth doll as she dumbly stated, Oh. Chu Yu immediately suffered a disadvantage since it was two versus one. He then lifted his chin unhappily and lost his temper, deciding not to speak. When Chu Ti and I saw this, he pondered before speaking, My mommy will come today. How about going to see her later with me? As long as you see her, you will surely feel that she is prettier than your so-called beautiful auntie. Chu Yu snorted. Impossible. Chu Ti and I wanted to continue speaking, but his phone suddenly rang. He lowered his head and glanced at the notification as he exclaimed in surprise, My mommy is here. Let's go and find her. Chu Ti and I pulled Chu Xiaoming along with one hand, while his other hand was pulling the reluctant Chu Yu. Outside the door. Lin Wanru still didn't want to give up. It's because I interacted too few times with my child so he didn't want me. Matriarch Chu impatiently spoke, a mother and son would have a bloodline connection. You are thinking too much. Lin Wanru didn't know what to say. After that, the butler came over. Matriarch, Shin Ruajing is here. She's outside. Matriarch Chu's expression turned cold. I've said it. Before this matter is clear, she cannot enter. The butler nodded and went to handle this matter. Lin Wanru's eyes gleamed. Auntie, I will make a move first. Amen. After Lin Wanru left, Matriarch Chu was planning to head upstairs, but she suddenly saw the silhouettes of three children acting sneakily and running toward the entrance gate. She frowned and followed them. Outside the gate, Shen Ruajing was clad in loose clothes that hid the wound on her leg. She leaned against her car and waited impatiently for some time, but the butler actually told her to go back. Miss Shen, you should return. The Chu family temporarily doesn't welcome you. Lin Wanru also followed the butler out and spoke as though she was the female master of this house. Shin Ruajing, why are you so persistent like a ghost haunting a place? She walked toward Shin Ruajing and whispered, let me tell you the truth. With me here, don't even think of entering the gate of the Chu family. As the sound of her voice faded, she heard three voices filled with joy and surprise ringing out behind her. Mommy! Mommy! Beautiful auntie? Chu Ti and I pulled Chu Xiaomeng along as he excitedly ran toward Shen Ruajing. However, a figure flashed past him and directly hugged Shen Ruajing. Chu Yu's little hand was tightly clutching the corner of Shen Ruajing's shirt as though he was afraid that she might run away. Beautiful auntie, are you here to see me? Shen Ruajing was somewhat shocked. Why are you here? Chu Yu said, this is my house. Shen Ruajing didn't think too much. After all, there were so many young masters in the Chu family, so she had no idea whose child this was. Chu Ti and I who was a step slower? So the beautiful auntie Chu Yu spoke about was his mommy. He quickly brought Chu Xiaoming with him and stood between Chu Yu and Shen Ruajing, separating them. Mommy, sister and I miss you a lot. Shen Ruajing stroked Chu Tianya's curly hair before glancing at Chu Xiaoming. Were you bored? Chu Xiaoming nodded. Shen Ruajing then passed the backpack she was carrying to her. There, this is for you. Chu Xiaoming's eyes brightened, and she took over the backpack, hugging it tightly. Chu Ti and I couldn't help but speak, Mommy, I earned one million yesterday. Chu Yu, who was squeezed out of the way, looked at the interactions between the three of them. The proud young master then lifted his chin and snorted while turning his head away. He didn't care at all. So childish. At the next instant, Shin Ruajing's clear voice asked, You must have been frightened yesterday. Did you sleep well? Chu Yu's eyes brightened and he also squeezed his way before Shin Ruajing, before nodding his head seriously. I slept very well. Beautiful auntie, is your wound still painful? Chu Ti and I nervously asked, Mommy, are you injured? Chu Yu explained, Auntie had to have eight stitches on her leg because she saved me. Chu Ti and I quickly hugged Shin Ruajing's arm. Mommy, you shouldn't be standing. Let me help you inside so you can sit down. 
Chu Yu also took the chance to hug Shen Ruajing's other arm. Right. Beautiful auntie, remember to walk slower. However, Shen Ruajing didn't move. She was looking at Matriarch Chu, who was behind the three children. An embarrassed look appeared on Matriarch Chu's face. However, her attitude could still be considered friendly as she said, Miss Shen, I didn't expect that you were the one who saved Chu Yu. Please enter. Upon seeing Shen Ruajing being ushered in by the little bee asterisk stars, Lin Wanru was so anxious that she clenched her fists tightly to the extent that her fingernails dug into her palms. After that, she turned and walked to an empty place before calling Madame Lin with trembling fingers. She then lowered her voice and spoke nervously, Mother, Shen Ruajing has entered the Chu Manor. What should I do? Lin Wanru told everything to her mother, but her mother immediately reprimanded her. Why are you panicking? Things have not reached that stage yet. You just have to ignore everything and keep insisting you were the one who slept with Chu Tsichin that night, while she was sleeping with Chu Chimo. After all, the DNA test result yesterday is basically enough. She won't know the medical technicalities unless she is a doctor. Hearing this, Lin Wanru heaved a sigh of relief. That's true. After hanging up, she turned and entered the Chu Manor again. Chu Tsichin walked out of the study, and just when he was preparing to head down, he heard some noise. He then lowered his head and saw three children pulling Shen Ruajing inside the house. This woman was clad in loose-fitting casual clothes, and her walking pose was lazy. She seemed to have sensed something and lifted her head for a look. After matching gazes with Chu Tsichin, her lips curled slightly. A light gleamed in her peach blossom eyes and her tall nose involuntarily gave off a sense of carefreeness that would cause one's heart to flutter. However, Chu Tsichin's face turned cold. Mommy, sit down. Chu Ti and I supported Shen Ruajing to the sofa and took the chance to flip the flaps of her leggings open, all while Shen Ruajing and Chu Tsichin were staring at each other. After seeing the wound, he took a deep breath of cold air. Mommy, is it painful? Chu Xiaomeng also glanced at her with worry. At this moment, Chu Tsichin's vision swept past her and subconsciously moved downward. The woman's fair and flawless leg actually had stitches on it, and this caused his brows to crease. Shen Ruajing was still looking straight at him. Just a small injury, it's not painful. She seemed to be answering Chu Tianya's question but was clearly telling Chu Tsichin not to worry. She was truly seducing him at every moment. Chu Tsichin turned his gaze away and went down. Matriarch Chu looked at the wound and exclaimed, It is so serious? Is it painful or not? Would there be a scar? Shen Ruajing covered her wound back. It's fine. If it was another person, they would probably say the wound was extremely serious to seek gratitude and sympathy. However, her casual appearance made it seem as though the outside gossip about her being an ignorant slacker was all false. Hence, Matriarch Chu's attitude toward her became several times better. Her tone even had a hint of friendliness within. Miss Shen, I heard Little Yi saying that it was very tough on you to raise him and his sister alone. This matter can only be blamed on my unreliable son. Tough? Shen Ruajing then cast a glance at Chu Tianai, and he could only smile guiltily in response. Shen Ruajing couldn't be bothered to expose him. At this moment, Matriarch Chu continued to speak, now that the DNA results are out, you don't have to worry. The Chu family will definitely give you a proper answer. Shen Ruajing's voice was still as clear as ever. Matriarch Chu, I don't need any answer. After all, this matter was done out of free will from both parties. I only want Chu Tsichen's explanation. Upon hearing this, Chu Tsichen's expression grew heavier and his voice also became colder. I don't have anything to say to you. Miss Shen, let me advise you not to pester me again. If not, don't blame me for ignoring the children's emotions. Shen Ruajing's expression changed as she coldly spoke. What do you mean? The DNA test was already done, but he still didn't want to admit their relationship. At this moment, Chu Chimo rushed down the stairs. He who had just woken up had a head full of disheveled hair. Shen Ruajing, why are you so shameless? A withered flower like you even dare to covet my brother? Let me tell you, let alone my elder bro, even I look down on you. I won't marry you. Shut up. Matriarch Chu twisted his ears and angrily spoke, Miss Shen was the one who saved Chu Yu. She is the benefactor of our family. Who permitted you to speak to her in such a manner? Chu Chimo cried out but didn't dare to resist. Matriarch Chu then spoke to Shen Ruajing, Miss Shen, don't worry. I will definitely make Chimo take responsibility. Chu Chimo, mother, even if you beat me to death, I'm not going to marry her. The entire living room was in chaos. At this moment, Lin Wanru also came back. 
Amidst the commotion, Shinruajing sat up straight. Her gaze which was staring at Chutsichin's eyes slowly turned cold. After that, she mocked, So, you are preparing to push me to your younger brother? Chutsichin's heart was filled with rage. He felt like he had been played when he thought of how many times he was close to agreeing to do the DNA test previously. He threw the DNA report onto the table. Miss Shen, please look at the report clearly. Shen Ruajing? She glanced at the report and the testees' names appeared on the first row, Chu Tianai and Chu Chimo. She then looked at the similarity, and it was 99%. When Lin Wanru saw this, she took the chance and said, Shen Ruajing, stop acting. The children belong to Chimo. Stop pestering Sichen, I know Sichen's identity is noble and you don't want to lose to me. However, you can't be so shameless and disregard a rock because you want to trade for a pearl. Chu Chimo also spoke, that's right, you can't be so shameless. Wait a minute, are you saying that I'm a rock? Lin Wanru coughed and changed the topic. If you don't obediently marry Chimo and continue to pester Sichen, I'm afraid that this family would be in chaos. I believe Auntie Chu and Sichen wouldn't permit such a situation to appear. With the DNA report present, Shinruajing wouldn't be able to explain clearly even if she were to jump into the river. Even if she said that the children belonged to Chu Sichen, no one would believe her. This was a checkmate, and Shinruajing could only concede. The only way out was if she knew the medical arts and could see through the technicalities, but it was impossible. However, Shinruajing wasn't as anxious as Lin Wanru had imagined. Her gaze was filled with amusement as she coldly laughed before slowly speaking, there's a problem with this report. The entire room fell silent. Lin Wanru clutched her fingers tightly and started screaming before anyone could speak. That's impossible. The report is written by a company Tsichin trusted. There won't be any problem. At this moment, Chu Tsichin's expression was unfathomable. Matriarch Chu sighed. Miss Shen, the Chu family can guarantee the truth of this report. No one can amend anything here. Shen Ruajing nodded. Sorry, I expressed things wrongly. There's no problem with this report, but there's a problem with what you guys are understanding. Her fair lanky finger pointed at the conclusion of the report. Here, it is written there's a 99% chance that they might have the relationship of a father and son. Shen Ruajing then continued, in theory, as long as the similarity reaches 99%, it can be confirmed that they are related by blood. Some fathers and sons have lower compatibility, so their reports will indeed show the 99% chance. However, there are also uncles and nephews who can reach 98% to 99% in the similarity of their DNA for the higher compatibility cases. So strictly speaking, a single-sided test has no way to verify whether the two are uncle and nephew or father and son. Matriarch Chu started. Are there any solutions to judge then? Shen Ruajing then glanced at the pale Lin Wanru. Yes, since the uncle and nephew compatibility already reached 99%, the father and son's percentage would only be higher. Get Chutsichen and Little Yi to test again, and the answer will be out. No way! Lin Wanru shouted. She didn't expect that Shen Ruajing actually understood such technicalities. Shen Ruajing frowned. Why not? Lin Wanru's agitated reaction drew their attention, so everyone was looking at her. Lin Wanru nervously spoke, I personally saw Chimo leaving your hotel room that night, so this can't be fake. Hence, there's no need to have Tsichin do a DNA test. Shen Ruajing teasingly spoke, Miss Lin, it's just another DNA test, and it's a simple procedure. Do you have other motives seeing that you keep objecting to this? Lin Wanru grew even more panicked. She continued speaking, after so many years, Tsichin only has a s asterisk soul relationship with me. You should stop dreaming. Shen Ruajing started as doubt filled her voice. You guys, have A.S. asterisk soul relationship? Lin Wanru tugged Chu Tsichen's arm. That's right, you probably don't know this, but the child you saved is my son. So, please give up on Tsichen, stop disrupting our lives. Not only did he have A.S. asterisk soul relationship with Lin Wanru, but they even had a child. Shen Ruajing's heart felt as though it was pricked by a needle. Her earlier spirited self had vanished. She then calmly looked at Chu Tsichen. So you clearly didn't lose your memories, but you are unwilling to acknowledge me. Is this the reason why? Her gaze contained a sorrow so heavy that it couldn't be lifted. She was sorrowful because she had made the wrong judgment. Chu Tsichen clearly knew that he had never dated Shen Ruajing before, it was impossible for him to be her fiancé. His heart grew heavier and he abruptly stood up. Miss Shen, let me reiterate. I don't know you, 
and I won't do any DNA testing with your children. To ordinary people, this DNA report was already enough to determine a father and son relationship. After saying this, he straightened his tie and walked out of the door. Seeing this, Lin Wanru heaved a sigh of relief and felt that she had regained life once more. She didn't discover that all her actions were seen by Matriarch Chu. Shen Ruajing stood there in a dazed state. During all these years, her only regret in life was Chu Chen. She had looked for him for five years and persisted for five years. She had also thought about what if he was married and had children. If that was the case, she would absolutely not pester him. But what was going on with his current actions now? Shen Ruajing's tears dropped, and her eyelashes fluttered with complex emotions. She then said, Matriarch Chu, Little Yi and Little Meng will stay here for a few days. I will pay you another visit in the future. She didn't like giving up when there were still so many unknown factors. She stood up and was preparing to leave, but a little figure suddenly rushed over to hug her leg. Chu Yu lifted his head and looked at her. Beautiful auntie, don't leave. Chu Tianai clenched his little fists and spoke angrily, Mommy, after I grow up and inherit daddy's inheritance, I won't provide for him when he is old and in retirement. Chu Xiaoming also went to hold her hand. Although she didn't speak, her attitude was clear. Lin Wanru's expression turned ugly when she looked at Chu Yu and the other children being so close to Shen Ruajing. She walked over to lift Chu Yu up. Little Yu, don't make trouble. Your daddy will never permit Miss Shen to enter the Chu family. In that case, we will get beautiful auntie to stay and get daddy to leave. Chu Yu shouted and hugged Shen Ruajing's leg even tighter. He was determined not to let her leave. Matriarch Chu had never refused her grandchild before, so she helplessly spoke. Miss Shen, we have plenty of guest rooms. Why don't you stay here for now? Our family doctors are present too, so they can look at your wound and treat it. Lin Wanru spoke unhappily, this isn't too convenient, right? After all, Shen Ruajing is still under investigation for child abuse. It's unsuitable for her to stay together with the children. Chu Chimo grew angry after hearing this. Right, you don't leave. Explain first. Why did you abuse my daughter? After the DNA test results were out, he was certain that the children belonged to him. This was because he had asked the institution before and they had told him that 99% similarity meant that he could basically be certain they were his children. This was why he kept acting in the stance of their father. Shen Ruajing? Chu Chimo pointed at Xiaoming. Look at how habitually silent she is. It's all because of your abuse that she developed a psychological illness. Chu Xiaoming? She clutched the fearsome-looking cloth doll and spoke timidly, Mommy has never abused me. At this moment, the doctor in charge entered and brought with him the medical reports of the two children. Chu Chimo grew more confident when he saw the doctor. Shin Ruajing, I know you won't admit it, and the children will shield you too. However, it's fine. Dr. Li, tell her the results for Chu Xiaoming. Dr. Li quietly spoke, the little young miss is very healthy, but she does have some problems psychologically. She has a slight social phobia, and there are usually two situations that cause this. Firstly, one must have been psychologically impacted so they're afraid of strangers. Secondly, it's because their intellect is too high and they dislike interacting with people of average IQ. Chu Chimo directly ignored the second situation. So, which psychological impact did she suffer? Dr. Lee, the little young miss belongs to the second situation. Chu Chimo? He was extremely shocked but soon grew excited after that. I actually have a genius daughter. After hearing their words, Matriarch Chu suddenly turned and shot a glance at the butler nearby. Not many people knew this, but when Chu Tsichen was young, he took a very long time to speak. When they got a doctor to assess him, the result was that his intelligence was too high. It was also for this reason that the family decided to nurture him as the next successor in secret overseas. She then looked at Shen Ruajing again, before speaking in a soft voice to the butler, go and get Sichen's razor from his bathroom and do the DNA test again. Matriarch Chu's voice was very low and she intentionally hid this from Lin Wanru, so Lin Wanru didn't hear it. Chu Chimo was currently speaking with Shen Ruajing. On account of the children, I will reluctantly accept and marry you. We can't possibly let our children grow up without their mother. Shen Ruajing. She didn't plan to join him in this farce. Hence, she lowered her head and looked at Chu Yu, but one couldn't read her expression. After that, she spoke to Matriarch Chu, farewell. After saying that, she pulled her clothes from Chu Yu's finger and walked away. Chu Yu wanted to chase her, but Lin Wanru hugged him. Little Yu, don't make trouble. Let the guest leave. Release me, you don't have the right to care about me. 
Chu Yu ruthlessly bit Lin Wanru's wrist and struggled free because he wanted to chase after Shen Ruajing. But when he reached the entrance, Shen Ruajing had driven away. Lin Wanru felt pain from the bite. As her patience was completely exhausted, she angrily shouted, I'm your mother, how can I not care about you? My mother? Chu Yu's back faced her and his shoulders sagged. His voice contained a toughness that was rare to hear in children. It's all because of you that the beautiful Andi hates me. Hearing this, Lin Wanru was so angry that her entire body was trembling. She had raised an ungrateful cur. Chu Yu turned his head and asked Chu Tianai, Will the beautiful Andi dislike me? Chu Tianai touched his curly hair. I don't know, but don't worry, I won't make things worse for you. Chu Yu lowered his head sadly. Chu Chimo basically ignored the two fellows. He only had eyes for his genius daughter Chu Xiaoming. However, the little girl had opened her backpack and was searching through it. There was a copy of, General Relativity. A, Study of Gravity. A 17th Order Rubik's Cube. And lastly, a box of 24 strange beverages that were packaged exquisitely. However, they had no labels and should be something self-made. He asked, what's this? Chu Xiaoming didn't speak, so Chu Tianai explained, these are the nutrients mommy mixed for me and my younger sister. He ran over and took two bottles out. After contemplating, he passed one of them to Chu Yu. I'll treat you to a drink, don't be sad anymore. After hearing that this was something personally made by the beautiful auntie, Chu Yu's eyes brightened. Sure. Seeing that the three children were interacting harmoniously, Matriarch Chu looked at Lin Wanru and said, I need to take a trip somewhere, let's go together. Sure. Lin Wanru clenched her fists with hatred. When her vision landed on those beverages, a venomous look appeared in her eyes. If those two children are not handled, something will go wrong sooner or later. Shen Ruajing, you are the one who forced me. She followed Matriarch Chu and left the Chu Manor. Shen Ruajing returned to her house. Just when she was preparing to go up, her mobile phone suddenly rang. Her expression drastically changed. She had installed an app on her children's mobile phones so they could send her a warning if they were in danger. At this moment, the sounds of two warnings rang out together, and they were even more deafening compared to the sounds yesterday. Hence, she took out her phone to verify their positions and discovered that they were still in the Chu Manor. She immediately rushed out after that. She sped all the way and finally arrived at the Chu Manor. However, she discovered that the gate was already open, and the people inside were in a panic. A bunch of doctors were currently rushing to the living room. She hurriedly followed behind them. Before she entered, she already heard Lin Wanru shouting angrily. Why are you guys still caring about those two little bastards? Quickly look at little Yu. Don't you all know how to differentiate who is more important? Little Yu is Xichen's son, so if something happens to him, Chu Xichen will definitely not spare you all. Shen Ruajing was stunned. Did something happen to Chu Yu too? The moment she entered, she saw that the living room was in chaos. There were around eight doctors surrounding the sofa. Unable to see the situation, she walked toward them, but all of a sudden, she heard a weak but familiar voice. Water, water. Shen Ruajing abruptly turned and saw Chu Tianai and Chu Xiaomeng lying on the ground. The two children felt extreme pain in their stomachs, and their bodies curled up from the pain. Chu Tianya's head was covered in sweat, and his lips were also pale. He was currently puking. Also, he felt extremely thirsty and wanted to drink water. But everyone was surrounding Chu Yu, no one cared about him. Shen Ruajing suppressed the anger in her heart and first rushed toward Chu Tianai and Chu Xiaoming. Chu Xiaoming had already fainted from the pain. Hence, Shen Ruajing tapped a few acupoints on Chu Tianya's body to alleviate his pain. Only then did Chu Tianai open his eyes. After he saw Shen Ruajing, he had an expression of being wronged on his face. Mommy, could it be that I and sister aren't daddy's children? Why don't they want to treat us? Shen Ruajing's anger surged even hotter. She placed her hand on Chu Tianya's pulse to check his condition. At this moment, a doctor walked in from outside. The results are out. The three children drank daylily juice. See. After hearing this, the sound of everyone gasping could be heard. An urgent and icy voice suddenly rang out from the door. Since you all now have the answer, why are you guys still not treating the children? Chu Tsichen, who had received the news, finally rushed back. The panicking Chu family finally felt at ease with his presence. One of the doctors sighed. Such poison is usually used for weeding. The toxicity is too strong, and it is fatal often with a single mouthful. In addition, there are basically no antidotes for this. Chu Tsichen frowned as he felt extremely pressured. There has to be a way. 
Think. The scene fell silent, and the doctor in charge here spoke, a few years ago, Professor Z researched and concocted a type of detoxification pill. If we can give them the pill within half an hour, the poison should be detoxified. Chutsichin heaved a sigh of relief. But at the next moment, the doctor in charge sighed. But I only have a single pill of it. Professor Z's medicine was too hard to purchase. Even if they wanted to buy some now, it wouldn't be in time. Everyone looked at the two children in the corner. At this moment, Lin Wanru's eyes gleamed, and she suddenly shouted loudly, Shinruajing, the poison has been verified to be in the beverages you gave. I know you hate me, but why did you want to poison my child to death? You are even willing to drag your own children in. What do they count for in your eyes? She directly shouted to the doctor in charge, she doesn't care about their lives at all. Hence, give the antidote to little you. Based on what? Chu Chimo had just arrived. Are you going to ignore my children? Lin Wanru bit her lips. She is the one who poisoned them, and she has two children. Even if we gave her the pill, she wouldn't know which to save. So, we might as well save little you. She looked at Chu Tsichen and enunciated each word slowly, little you is your son. Shut up. Chu Tsichen's brows were tightly creased. He looked at his pale-faced son on the bed and Shinruajing in the corner. The woman's expression was still calm like she wasn't bothered at all. However, he understood that there must be terrifying waves rocking her heart under her calmness. The doctor in charge urged, Mr. Chu, quickly make a decision. Things will be too late if you continue to delay. Chu Tsichen suddenly spoke, Miss Shen, what do you think? Hearing this question, Shen Ruajing slowly turned her head. Her peach blossom eyes were dark, and no one could tell her thoughts. She suddenly revealed a mocking smile. Give the pill to Chu Yu, but you have to promise me something. Do a DNA test with my children after that. Chu Tsichen's pupils narrowed. He was shocked yet also disappointed. He didn't expect her to choose to save his son, he was also disappointed because she didn't hesitate to give up on her children. He was silent for a period and then said, okay. But as the sound of his voice rang out, Matriarch Chu rushed in with an unsightly expression. She cast a ruthless glance at Lin Wanru. There's no need for that anymore. The test result is out. When Chu Tsichen said the word okay, the doctor in charge immediately fed Chu Yu the antidote. After all, it was a race against death. Every second counted. Matriarch Chu didn't have time to stop the doctor, so she could only sigh. She then passed the report in her hands to Chu Tsichen. I didn't expect so many things would happen when I just went out to look for someone to do a DNA test. Chu Tsichen received the report and swept his eyes through it. When he saw the conclusion, his eyes violently narrowed. 99.9%. .9%. How is this possible? He stared in astonishment at Shen Ruajing. Earlier when she kept pestering him to do a DNA test, and when the two children ran over and called him daddy, his heart was moved. A DNA test could be done as simply as him just saying yes. However, this woman kept saying that they had half a year of romance before. Hence, he was sure either this woman had recognized the wrong person or she was a liar. So when Lin Wanru had said that the children belonged to Chu Chimo, and Chu Chimo also admitted it, he felt that the case had been closed. Lin Wanru was also stunned. Never did she expect that this old fool would do a DNA test behind her back. When she looked at Chu Tsichen's expression, she understood that the truth was out. Matriarch Chu and Chu Tsichen were about to interrogate her, but she hadn't thought of how to reply to them yet. So in a panic, she pointed to the beverages at the side and spoke without thinking, Tsichen, the poison originated from Shinruajing. The doctors discovered poison in the beverages she gave them. She must have hated us, so she wanted to poison all three children to death. As her words rang out, Chu Chimo who was immersed in the role of the father didn't even bother looking at the DNA test as he glared at Shinruajing with rage. It's one thing to hate her, but why do you have to implicate the children? Are you really so merciless? Shinruajing could feel anger and resentment in the surroundings. Ever since she entered, she had been suppressing the flames of rage in her heart. But now, the flames had reached their limit. She had seen all sorts of people before, but only very few could make her so angry. Lin Wanru's actions today had touched her bottom line. She then put Chu Tianai down and stood up. Her eyes were dark, and her expression still looked calm, but one could sense a baleful and terrifying aura from her. She slowly walked toward Lin Wanru step by step. After that, she looked at the remaining beverages and asked in a very low voice, was the poison discovered in all the beverages? The doctor said, there is indeed poison in all the drinks. 
In order to frame Shinruwa Jing, Lin Wanru naturally wouldn't leave behind any loopholes. Why are you still pretending? You want them to be poisoned no matter which they drank, so you poisoned everything, right? You. Shinruwa Jing didn't wait for her to finish speaking. She directly walked over and grabbed Lin Wanru by the chin. After that, she took a beverage with her other hand and wrenched the cap open with force before pushing the bottle into Lin Wanru's mouth, chugging it down. Lin Wanru instantly paled. She struggled violently and wanted to push Shin Ruajing away. However, Shin Ruajing steadily stood there. It was unknown how Shin Ruajing could exert force while grabbing her chin, but Lin Wanru was basically helpless to resist. Gurgle. Lin Wanru could clearly sense that she had drunk the entirety of the beverage. Her eyes were wide open with shock. She felt that the expressionless Shin Ruajing was like a devil from hell. Quickly save her. When everyone finally came to their senses and wanted to rescue Lin Wanru, Shin Ruajing already let her go. Lin Wanru fell limply onto the ground as though she had just choked on a bone. The bottle that was emptied was thrown beside her, not a single droplet remained. Shin Ruajing didn't even turn her head. She carried Chu Tianai and the unconscious Chu Xiaomeng before staring fixedly at Chu Tsichen. She then coldly spoke, tell everyone who is Chu Tianya's father. Chu Tsichen pursed his lips. Whenever this woman saw him, she would always speak in a familiar tone. Yet, at this moment, she was exceptionally cold, and this caused him to be unable to adapt. He also wasn't sure what to do. He was silent for a moment before speaking, I'm his father. He thought that this woman wanted justice, an answer, and an explanation. However, he didn't expect that Shin Ruajing merely turned and spoke to Chu Tianai, Little Yi, have you heard it? Chu Tianya's eyes were red, and he buried his head into her embrace. Yes. His mommy was using practical actions to tell him the answer to the question he was asking earlier. He and his younger sister were indeed the children of their father. Shin Ruajing then swept her gaze to the doctors, nannies, and maids here as she slowly enunciated. All of you better remember this. They are the children of the Chu family, so if you guys still dare to have differential treatment, prepare yourselves to end up like Lin Wanru. Her tone was calm, yet her words were extremely frightening. These servants all shivered upon hearing it. Shen Ruajing no longer cared about them. She directly carried the two children and went out. The living room was in complete silence until the sound of puking rang out. Only then did everyone discover that Lin Wanru had chugged down a bottle of soap water and was forcing herself to vomit. These bottles of soap water were prepared for the three children earlier. She vomited all over the ground until she was certain that there was no more poison in her, and only then did she finally stop. However, there was still a burning sensation that hurt as bad as being cut in her throat. She shouted to the doctors, save me. They rushed over and checked her body. Luckily, the majority of poison has been puked out, and only a very little amount is absorbed. The conditions of the three children were so serious because no one discovered that they were poisoned until a long time had passed. The optimal time to pump their stomachs was delayed. On the other hand, Lin Wanru had managed to induce herself to vomit in a timely manner. Although her condition wasn't serious, the poison she chose was too ruthless, so once it entered a body, the body would absorb some no matter what. And the amount that was absorbed was sufficient to cause damage to her inner organs. Even if she didn't die in the end, her body would become much frilier. Lin Wanru sobbed and complained to Chu Tsichen, Tsichen, Shin Ruoling's actions are too overbearing. Did you see it? She was trying to poison me to death before your eyes. She's a murderer. However, she discovered that Chu Tsichen was ignoring her. He was calmly looking in the direction Shin Ruajing left. Lin Wanru shouted loudly, Tsichen, she is a cold-blooded animal. She was the one who poisoned the children. After the incident, she made the decision to give the pill to Chu Yu because she wanted you to feel guilty, so you wouldn't pursue her wrongdoings. Even if Chu Yu is fine, the other two children are going to die. She still caused the death of your children. You cannot spare her. How dare Shen Ruajing force feeds me poison? I want her to die. But as the sound of her voice faded, Chu Chimo rushed toward her. What do you mean? The children belong to my brother? Are they not mine? Chu Tsichen finally turned his head. That night, five years ago, you were not the one. Hearing this sentence, Lin Wanru was stunned. Her limbs suddenly turned icy cold. This was what Lin Wanru was afraid of. Once Chu Tsichen found out that the two children were his, then he'd definitely be suspicious of her. She continued to insist. Chu Yu is your blood-related son. If it wasn't me that night, then where did he come from? 
Chuyu and Chutsichin's DNA test report also reached 99.5%. Therefore, Chuyu was definitely his child. Chutsichin wanted to ask more when Lin Wanru suddenly held onto her stomach. Big drops of sweat rolled down her cheeks and she shouted, Sichen, send me to the hospital. On Little Yu's account, send me to the hospital. After saying this, she fainted from the pain. Chutsichin stared at this woman and said in a cold tone, send her to the hospital. After that, Chutsichin walked up to the sofa. He noticed that Chu Yu's complexion had improved, showing that the detoxification pill was effective. Only then did he turn to walk out. Contact all the prestigious doctors in C-City to treat the two children. Separately, contact Professor Z immediately and search for detoxification pills. No matter what's the price to pay, even if you have to snatch the detoxification pills, make sure to get them. Yes. Chutsichin then looked at the family doctor. How much time do those two children have? The family doctor sighed. If they didn't take the detoxification pills in time, the poison would start to corrode their internal organs. They won't be able to live for more than an hour. This poison was so strong. Upon hearing this, Chu Chen's countenance turned even grimmer. Chu Chimo subconsciously said, that means there's less than an hour left. Why did that woman take those two children away? That's wasting time. If my children can't survive this, I won't let her off. The moment Chu Chimo said this, he was stunned on the spot. No, that's not right. They aren't my children. F asterisk CK. Siyu Chimo had initially thought that the ratio of children he had against his big bro was 2 to 1, and he had been secretly feeling happy that his big bro wasn't as good as him in impregnating. However, the ratio turned out to be 0 to 3? The genius daughter was someone else's. Chu Chimo hauled sadly in his heart but still followed behind Chu Tsichin. Big bro, I understand it now. She's making use of the two children's lives to force you to do a DNA test. She wants to make you regret it and live in guilt for the rest of your life. She's too vicious. Chutsichin's gaze turned a little dimmer. He didn't understand why Shinruajing would choose Chuyu over her two children at that critical moment. Was she acting in spite? However, he wasn't blaming her. After all, if he had to make a choice, he would also pick one decisively instead of dragging things out, causing all three children to die. Right now, he could only hope that there was enough time to resolve all of these. After he headed out, his subordinate reported, Miss Shen left in the direction of the suburbs district. She was probably headed back to her house. Chu Tsichin nodded and got in the car. Matriarch Chu also came along. I'll go too. The car moved and headed for the Shen family's residence in the suburbs. On the way, although Chu Tsichin appeared composed, his fingers that were twisted together still exposed his nervousness. Matriarch Chu rolled her eyes at him and couldn't help but complain, How many times did you fool around? Why are you losing out to your younger brother in terms of leading a chaste life? What are all these? Chu Tsichin rubbed his forehead. There was only that one night. He really had only fallen to a scheme that one time, but the drug was too strong, so it was true that he had lost control that night, and he had done it quite a few times. Chu Chimo was shocked. Brother, aren't you too amazing? Did you sleep with two women in one night? And both of them became pregnant with your children? You even ended up with three kids at one go. Matriarch Chu wanted to throw his son out of the car. She vaguely felt that something was amiss, but she was too worried about Chu Tianai and Chu Xiaoming that she discarded the other distractions in her mind. Chu Tsichen lowered his gaze and suddenly took out his phone. He then sent a message to a subordinate who had sent Lin Wanru to the hospital. Secretly take Lin Wanru's hair as a sample and do a DNA test with little Yu. When Shen Ruajing discovered that the two children were poisoned, she fed them the detoxification pill silently. No one noticed this amidst all the commotion. These pills were something that she constantly carried with her. It was because Chu Ti and I had an unbridled and outgoing nature, and he enjoyed running around outside. Now, there was a stretch of wild forest in the suburbs where they lived. They were in the south after all, so there were venomous snakes, bugs, and plants in that forest. By now, both children had woken up. Chu Tianai and Chu Xiaoming sat in the children's seats on the hind passenger seats. Chu Tianai was complaining away. This is too much. Daddy and his family are too much. Other than grandmother, none of them is good. If I had known, I would have asked for more money. I made a loss. A loss. The auntie with the surname Lin is also a big baddie. She must have been the one who had poisoned us. My stomach hurts so much. And daddy. If he doesn't give me more inheritance after this incident, I'll definitely not forgive him. After complaining for a while, 
he turned and looked at Chu Xiaoming, who was holding her dinosaur cloth doll. Even though she had fainted, she didn't let go of it. Sister, why aren't you saying anything? What are you thinking about? Chu Xiaoming. My books. I forgot to take them. Chu Tianya's lips twitched. Aren't you angry? Daddy gave the only pill to Chu Yu and not us. Does that mean that in his heart we aren't important? Chu Xiaoming lowered her head and didn't say anything. When Shen Ruajing, who was driving, heard the children's conversation, her grip on the steering wheel tightened. They soon arrived back home. They then discovered that Jing Zhen and Shen Qianhui were hanging up the washed bedsheets in their courtyard to dry. The two of them were busy doing housework. Shen Ruajing alighted the car with the two children and greeted them. Seeing them, Shen Qianhui brushed away the stray hair on her forehead and said with a smile, I don't have to go to work these few days anyway, so both of us washed all the bed sheets in the house. She shook open a white bed sheet and hung it up outside. Only after we washed all the bed sheets in the rooms did we realize there isn't enough space to dry our clothes. Therefore, we set up a few simple hanging stations outside. Although Chu Ti and I had a strong body like a young calf, after the poisoning, his complexion was pale. However, he still dragged his sickly body and ran up to Shen Qianhui's side. Grandmother, I'll help you. Shen Ruajing headed straight upstairs and vaguely heard Shen Qianhui saying, Aren't the photos you took with your sister moldy? The sun is good today. Take them out to sun them. All right, that'll be $50. Will you be paying via WeChat Pay or Alipay? When Chu Tsichen's group arrived at the Shen family's residence, this was the sight they saw. There was a stretch of white on the other side of the short wall. Chu Chimo was stunned. Are the children already dead? They've even hung up the white banner. His eyes immediately turned red. Although his daughter became his niece, after his interactions with the two children over the past two days, he really liked them from the bottom of his heart. He said furiously, it's all Shen Ruajing's fault. If she hadn't taken the children away, they wouldn't have died so fast. Chu Tsichen and Matriarch Chu were all stunned as they looked at the front. The three of them then entered the door to the wide-open terrace. Although they were mentally prepared on the way here, when they saw the photos of the children's faces, it was like they could hear their voices and see their smiling faces right before them. This is too much. This morning hall that Shen Ruajing set up is too simple. How can this be acceptable for our Chu family's children? Chu Chimo cursed angrily. However, when he turned his head, he saw a small figure as the white bedsheets fluttered in the wind. Chu Ti and I looked at him curiously. Uncle? Chu Chimo. There's a ghost. A sharp cry pierced through the sky. Shen Ruajing heard sounds coming from the entrance and quickly headed downstairs. She then saw the group from the Chu family. Chu Chimo was pinching Chu Tianya's face. You're alive? You didn't die? Chu Ti and I. If I'm dead, can Uncle burn some incense paper for me? Chu Chimo's lips twitched. Why are you so obsessed with money? By the way, I figured it out. You're not my son. Return the one million dollars I gave you back. I refuse. Chu Ti and I held on to his bank card that was in his pocket. This card only allows for money to go in and not out. Chu Chimo wanted to say more when Matriarch Chu slapped his head. You've given it out to a child, yet you're still thick-skinned enough to ask for it back? Chu Chimo, he scammed that money from me. It's his capability to have been able to scam it from you. If you've been scammed, then accept it. After saying that, Matriarch Chu looked at Shen Ruajing and glared at Chu Tsichen, who was next to her and wasn't saying anything. She then coughed and said, Little Yi, can you bring me around and show me your room? Chu Tianya's eyes lit up. All right. All right. Grandmother, come this way. Chu Chimo looked toward Shen Ruajing. Hey, woman, you. Before he could finish his words, Matriarch Chu pinched his ear and brought him to go to Chu Tianya's room as well. We'll go and check out little Ye's room together. Chu Chimo wanted to reject her. I'm not interested in a kid's room. No, you're interested. Matriarch Chu dragged him away forcibly, leaving some space for Shen Ruajing and Chu Tsichen. She knew that the two of them had things to talk about. Shen Ruajing stood at the entryway stairs, and her peach blossom eyes lowered. She was expressionless and seemed a little indifferent. When Chu Tsichen looked at how lively Chu Ti and I was, what else did he not understand? He squinted his eyes and asked, Do you have detoxification pills? On the way here, they had been told by the doctor that back then, the detoxification pills were only circulated within a small circle. The price wasn't high, but they were hard to get. Shen Ruajing replied with an N, her attitude still clearly cold. The children are fine, so Mr. Chu can go back now. She was angry. Chu Tsichen frowned. 
no one had ever dared to treat him like this before. Lin Wanru didn't even dare to act intimately with him by making use of Chu Yu. She kept a safe distance from him, knowing how to advance or retreat appropriately. However, he still felt disgusted toward her when he looked at her. However, to think that this woman kept pestering him from the first time they met. And now, she even dared to lose her temper with him. But on the account that she had been put through grief today, he wasn't going to hold it against her. A momentary silence appeared between the two of them. Upstairs. Chu Ti and I explained on the way, my grandparents went to the supermarket to shop for groceries. Paternal grandmother, this is my room and that is my sister's room. She's resting now, so how about we go to take a look at my room first? Chu Tianya's room was decorated simply, and the colors used were mainly blue and white. Grandmother, have a seat. Chu Ti and I let Matriarch Chu sit down in front of his desk. Then, his expression turned into shock, as if he was scared that Matriarch Chu would see something. He quickly hid a book that was placed on the table and didn't stand out at all, saying, This is my diary, you mustn't look at it. When Matriarch Chu heard this, her eyes lit up. This was her beloved grandson's diary. She coughed and educated him. Little Yi, you're only five years old, so you don't have any secrets to keep. Let grandmother help you check to see if you wrote any words incorrectly. Chu Ti and I broke into an embarrassed smile and then sighed. All right then, but you definitely mustn't look at page 38. After that, he said, I'll go call sister over. The child walked to the door, and before he left the room, he turned back and repeated, Remember, you definitely mustn't look at page 38. Matriarch Chu felt as if her heart was itching as if it was scratched by a cat. After the child left, she hurriedly opened up page 38 and saw a row of squiggly words. Today is my birthday, but mommy had to work till very late just so that she could buy a birthday cake for my sister and me. My heart aches so much for mommy. Mommy told me to make a wish. My wish is for my bank card to suddenly have $20 million. With that, I will be able to provide for mommy. I haven't told anyone about this wish before, because the wish wouldn't come true if I were to say it out loud. I won't show anyone this page of my diary either. Matriarch Chu's eyes turned red and she sighed. It hasn't been easy for Shen Ruajing to take care of two children for so many years. It's no wonder little Yi is so obsessed with money. It's all because their life has been too hard. Chu Chimo snorted. Our family is so rich, but you're still so obsessed over money. It can be seen that this aspect is inherited. Bang! Chu Chimo was hit on the head again and Matriarch Chu asked furiously, You've received the dividend payout from the company this month, right? Chu Chimo held onto his wallet. Mom, what do you want? This is the only birthday wish that your nephew has. How can we not fulfill it? Hurry up! Transfer $20 million to him. Why don't you do it? Oh, I can't bear to part with my money. Chuchimo? He tried to find an excuse, I don't have his bank account number. It's written here. Matriarch Chu handed him the diary, her eyes were red. It's written at the back. Chuchimo took a glance and realized that Chu Tianya's bank account number was really written at the back of the diary. Moreover, this was also written, I know that God will help to fulfill my birthday wish, so I've written my bank account number here, just in case God transfers the money to the wrong account. Chu Chimo. Why was he always the one to get hurt? In Chu Xiaoming's bedroom, the child was hugging her dinosaur cloth doll. Brother, didn't you say to go to your room? Wait a moment Chu Tianya's eyes were glistening. When he received the message from the bank that the money had been transferred to him, he grinned and said, Come, let's go bring them a plate of watermelons. Chu Xiaoming. For uncle? What uncle? That's an important customer. Peals of laughter rang out from upstairs, which contrasted with the coldness between Shen Ruajing and Chu Tsichen. Chu Tsichen took a look at the second floor, and his countenance turned better. He said rationally, Miss Shen, why don't we have a talk? Shen Ruajing sneered and said sourly, talk about why you two timed? Chu Chichen's expression turned cold. He had never been mocked like this in his life. Miss Shen, we're not enemies. Why do you have to show such great hostility? Moreover, other than not trusting your words in doing a DNA test in time, I didn't do any other thing that hurt you. Before he could finish his words, Jingzhen's voice rang out from outside. Honey, durians are really too expensive. We mustn't buy them again. The damn Chu family cut me off from my job, so I don't have any films to act in recently. I don't have any income. Moreover, Matriarch Shen has chased you out of the company under the Chu family's orders. They are not going to give us an allowance anymore. We also don't have much savings left and will need to spend sparingly. 
Little Yi is the most pitiful. He's so young, but to think that the Chu family gave the kindergarten orders, causing him to be unable to go to school. We have to hurry up and earn money so that he can go to a good school. What feud do we have with the Chu family that they have to be so merciless to us? Chu Tsichen? Shen Ruajing crossed her arm and frowned. Mn, the Chu family indeed has never done anything to harm me. They merely made it so that my father has no work, my mother is chased out of the family, and no schools will take my son in. Chu Tsichen felt a stinging pain on his face as though he just got slapped. He could tell just from thinking about it that Matriarch Chu wasn't someone that would do that. Lin Wanru must be the one who had used the Chu family's name to do so. He then opened his mouth and didn't shirk the responsibility. I apologize. At this moment, Jing Zhen and Shen Qianhui entered the house. Jing Zhen was still angry at the injustice as he said, also, that Chu Tsichen let down our Jing Jing. He better not let me see him, or I'll beat him up every time he appears before me. Shen Qianhui cast a glance at him, indicating that there was an outsider here. Only then did Jing Zhen hesitate and look at Chu Tsichen. Jing Jing, this is? Shen Ruajing had a half smile on her face. Chu Tsichen. Jing Zhen. His gaze roamed Chu Tsichen's body, and he coughed lightly before straightening his spine. Chu Tsichen was very tall. His height was 1.88 meters, and in addition to his solemn-looking face, he gave off a lofty and supreme feeling. However, now when Jing Zhen majestically stood beside him, his aura actually didn't lose out in the slightest. Jing Zhen took a step forward and patted Chu Tsichen's shoulder with the attitude of an elder. The two men stared at each other. One had peach blossom eyes, while the other had phoenix eyes. Sparks could be seen clashing through the air. A while later, Jing Zhen coldly snorted. Your muscles are pretty tough. Chu Tsichen? When their gazes matched, Jing Zhen's aura wasn't weaker than his at all. In fact, Chu Tsichen could sense vigilance from Jing Zhen, and he kept thinking that Jing Zhen was about to say something fierce to lecture him. After that, Jing Zhen walked past Chu Tsichen and had his hands behind him, while he walked into the living room. He then sighed, AI, I'm old now. Five years ago, you would definitely not be a match for me. Chu Tsichen stared at his departing back and had a heavy look on his face as he asked Shen Ruajing, was your father very powerful five years ago? Naturally. Shen Ruajing answered, at that time, he was acting as an emperor. She then added, the emperor of a defeated country. He is an extra. Chu Tsichen. Shen Qianhui followed Jing Zhen into the living room. Just when she entered, Jing Zhen anxiously grabbed her hand. Wife, why is someone from the Chu family here? Should we make preparations to flee during the night? Before Shen Qianhui could say anything, Chu Tianya's voice rang out from above. Grandpa, there's no need for that. My paternal grandmother and daddy won't come here to bully us. They came here to send warmth. Shen Qianhui and Jing Zhen had come home, so Matriarch Chu naturally wouldn't keep hiding with Chu Chimo above. They directly headed down. After both parties met, they sat on the sofa. Matriarch Chu looked at Shen Ruajing. I've investigated what happened. The poisoner was the nanny. Because she broke a vase a few days ago and I made her compensate us, she was very unhappy about it. She has admitted to the crime after being apprehended and is now being dealt with by the police. After hearing this, Shen Ruajing wasn't surprised. People from rich families naturally wouldn't act personally if they wanted to do something illegal. Back in the Chu Manor, she knew she wouldn't be able to obtain evidence so Lin Wanru could surely escape scot-free. This was why she had punished Lin Wanru with her own methods. Matriarch Chu evidently also thought of this point. She continued, in the past, I kept feeling that it wouldn't be good if Chu Yu didn't have a mother. That's why I wanted Lin Wanru and Si Chen to be together. But now, I feel that she isn't suitable to be a part of the Chu family, hence, I decide to cancel the engagement. This was the answer she gave. If Lin Wanru's body was damaged from the poison, and the engagement also got cancelled, that would be the best punishment for her. However, Matriarch Chu's words revealed another meaning. Lin Wanru was after all Chu Yu's mother, so it isn't appropriate for the Chu family to punish her too hard. Shen Ruajing nodded as a mocking smile appeared on her face. At this moment, Matriarch Chu's mobile phone suddenly rang. She then picked the call up and looked straight at Shen Ruajing when she heard what the butler said. It's little you, he wants to come and find you. When Shen Ruajing thought that the adorable child she had saved was actually Lin Wanru's son, she decided to ruthlessly reject it. I don't have the habit of raising someone's children. Matriarch Chu had always doted on this grandson of hers. Hence, she simply turned the loudspeaker on, and Chu Yu's juvenile voice rang out. 
beautiful auntie, I want to see you. Where are you and my brother and sister? I will come and look for you all. Shen Ruajing's heart trembled. Matriarch Chu then took the chance and spoke, Miss Shen, since Little Yi and Little Meng are also children of the Chu family, why don't you bring them along and stay in the Chu manor? This was her true purpose. Although she still didn't understand Shen Ruajing well, Matriarch Chu liked her for some reason. Back then, she had no choice but to choose Lin Wanru. But now, since Little Yu also liked Shen Ruajing, and she had given birth to two children for Chu Chen, Matriarch Chu would prefer it if they stayed together. Shen Ruajing leaned against the sofa. She then looked at Chu Chen and coldly rejected this idea. No need for that. Matriarch Chu still wanted to say something, but Chu Chen suddenly stretched out his hand and grabbed her phone. He then commanded coldly, You should stay at home. You are not allowed to go anywhere. I don't. Chu Yu's voice was filled with the tone of crying and stopped halfway since Chu Chen had hung up. Chu Yu's voice actually caused Shen Ruajing to feel some reluctance. Chu Chen then stood up after hanging up the phone. The children need to rest, so I won't impose on you any longer. Miss Shen, I will send people to investigate the matters from five years ago. I will inform you if there are any results. After speaking, he turned and left their house. Matriarch Chu didn't like the way things were going, but she didn't dare to defy her eldest son. Hence, she could only bring Chu Chimo with her and left together. After the Chus left, the living room was still a mess. Shen Qianhui was dumbfounded. So, Little Yi and Little Meng's father is Chu Cixin? Jing Zhen was filled with anticipation for the future. Jing Jing, do you think the Chu family can invest in me for a movie and let me be the main lead for once? Chu Tianai took out his bank card and was grinning happily as he lowered his head. Only Chu Xiaomeng suddenly looked at Shen Ruajing. Mommy, can we really not allow brother Yu to come? When Chu Tianai heard this, he hurriedly kicked Chu Xiaomeng. What nonsense are you talking about? He is the son of the bad woman and that bad woman harmed us. Chu Xiaomeng sighed. Why can't brother you be my real brother as well? They could love each other if they were triplets. Now, they were forced to split. Chu Tianai also sighed. He's actually quite pitiful seeing that he has such a bad woman for a mother. The two of them continued chatting to the point where even Shen Ruajing, who was listening at the side, felt like crying. She suddenly asked, Little Yi, when is Chu Yu's birthday? Chu Tianai was an expert at social interaction, and his personality was bright and straightforward. Hence, although he had only stayed a night in the Chu Manor, Shen Ruajing was sure that he had obtained all the information about Chu Yu. As expected, Chu Tianai grinned and answered, 4th of October. Shen Ruajing was stunned upon hearing this. Chu Cixin and his family returned home. After getting out of the car, Chu Cixin instructed people to inform the entire sea city that the Chu family had no problem with the Shen family. Moreover, Lin Wanru's orders were to be retracted. Matriarch Chu hadn't thought of doing this yet, so she could only sigh at her son's thoughtfulness. After that, the group of them hastened their steps and entered the upper levels. Although Chu Yu didn't show any bad symptoms before they left and he sounded energetic enough on the phone, Chu Cixin was still worried. Just when he went up, Chu Cixin was stopped by his subordinate. Miss Lin has been sent to the hospital, and the Lin family will be the ones taking care of her. Also, I have secretly retrieved Miss Lin's DNA sample. Now, the truth will be out as long as we take the little young master's sample to compare. The light in Chu Cixin's eyes gleamed brighter. Do it immediately. Yes. Just after his subordinate answered, Chu Cixin suddenly heard Matriarch Chu's cry of shock from the room. Chu Cixin quickly entered and saw Matriarch Chu shouting, Little Yu has left home. No one was on the bed. Now, the nanny and maid at the side were shivering as they explained. Little young master cried and said that he was tired after the phone call and he wanted to rest. He then told us to go out and even made it clear that we are not to disturb him. We didn't expect he would do this. Hearing this, Chu Cixin was in no mood to punish them. He strode to the bed and saw a note written there. Grandmother, I'm going to look for the beautiful auntie. Matriarch Chu exclaimed, he basically has no idea what Shen Ruajing's address is. Quickly check the surveillance cameras and see how he got out. Very soon, they went to the monitoring room and saw that half an hour ago, Chu Yu had secretly slipped out. He had avoided everyone below and intelligently entered the Chu family's van used for purchasing stuff. The Chu family's businesses were too big, and there were many servants in the villa. Just the amount of food the entire Chu manor ate per day was unbelievably great, so that van was specially used to purchase ingredients. Chu Cixin calmly spoke, call the driver. 
Two minutes later, Chutsichin saw the video recording of the van. After the van left, it headed to the market. The market was very chaotic, and not many places had surveillance cameras. There was footage that saw the van stopping at the seafood section. When the purchasing was being done, Chuyu climbed out of the van. He then glanced around him in a daze before running toward an alley without cameras. A sense of unease then flooded Chutsichin's heart. The marketplace was an extremely messy place with different types of people mixed in together. Also, the cameras at the few entrances and exits didn't capture Chuyu leaving. This meant that he was either still in the market or had been abducted by someone and was being hidden in a car and brought away. Chutsichin revealed some panic in his eyes. Find him. Two hours later, the Chu family sent out over a hundred guards and searched through the entire marketplace but wasn't able to find any traces of Chuyu. Chutsichin harbored the last bit of hope in his heart and called Shinruajing. The call lasted a long time before it got picked up. After that, Shinruajing's calm voice could be heard. Hello? Chutsichin fell silent. Is Chuyu at your place? No. Shinruajing replied cleanly and subconsciously asked, What happened? Nothing. Chutsichin faintly had a guess in his heart. If he goes to look for you, please contact me immediately. After hanging up, Lu Qing was pacing before him nervously. Bro Chen, seeing that the other party was able to bring Chuyu away so quietly without traces, they are not simple. Think carefully, did you offend anyone recently? Especially so for people close to you? Chuyu had always been a hidden existence. Other than the servants who signed a confidentiality contract, only a few people knew of his existence. Lu Qing racked his brains and couldn't think of anyone suspicious. However, he discovered Chu Chen clenching his fists as he sat on the sofa. He started slightly. In his impression, Bro Chen would always be able to maintain his calmness no matter what problems he faced. Hence, this was the first time he saw Bro Chen being nervous. But after that, he saw Chu Chen slowly loosening his clenched fists and moving his fingers around. This reaction, Lu Qing then asked, Bro Chen, you know who was the one doing this? Chu Chen nodded, Mn. I'll immediately summon the subordinates to gather. Tell me who it is. We will raise their place to flat ground. They are really gutsy to have touched little you. There's no need to be anxious. Chutsichin's eyes were so dark that it was terrifying. His entire person exuded an extremely chilly air. If we forced them too far, they might choose complete destruction. Lu Qing paled. What should we do then? Chu Yu was only five years old and didn't have the ability to protect himself. Now that he was in the hands of others, if they made any hasty moves, the other party might really finish Little Yu off to destroy all evidence. There was only a single solution then. Luring the snake out of the cave. Shen family. Shen Ruajing sat comfortably on her sofa. There was a thermal flask next to her, and warm wolfberry tea was inside. This drink was very nourishing. Her gaze landed on her phone. Did Chi go missing? If not, why would Chu Chen ask her that question? However, what did this have to do with her? Chu Yu's birthday was on the 4th of October. Her children's birthday was on the 10th, so they were only a week apart. The twins were considered premature births. They came into this world when they were eight months old. If that was the case, when Chu Chen and her were dating back then, he was already cheating on her. Regardless of whether he could remember her or not, he was a scumbag. Shen Ruajing placed her phone on the sofa and closed her eyes to rest. Thirty seconds later, she opened her eyes while feeling vexed. She then took her phone and called the number. The other party picked up instantly and asked, Boss, have you thought things through? Are you selling the patent? Help me do a check on the Chu family. Lu Hui was someone skilled in everything, there was no gossip in Sea City that he didn't know. When he heard this, he directly said, Oh, they lost their grandchild. Shen Ruajing's eyes narrowed. Why? The little young master of the Chu family has gone missing, but no one knows the details. After all, no rich family would announce to the world how many children they have. I heard that the missing child went missing in the marketplace. Shen Ruajing's grip on her phone tightened. After that, she felt that she was very ridiculous. Chu Yu was Lin Wanru and Chu Chen's son, so why would she be worried for him? She then hung up the phone and after drinking a mouthful of her tea, she suddenly stood up and headed outside. Shen Qianhui asked doubtfully, where are you going? Buying ingredients. As she said this, Shen Ruajing already got into her car and drove out. Shen Qianhui glanced at the ingredients she had bought earlier at the marketplace, as well as their fully stuffed fridge, as many, appeared in her mind. Shen Ruajing went to the largest marketplace in Sea City. 
there were countless streams of people here. Every day, the traffic would reach over 10,000 people, so it was extremely chaotic. She parked outside and found a fruit stall while taking the chance to observe the surrounding situation. Miss Shen? All of a sudden, a voice filled with hesitation rang out. Shen Ruajing turned and saw an unfamiliar young female looking at her. That female excitedly said, Oh, it's really you. I was the nurse who aided you in childbirth five years ago. Are your three children doing well?